Ah, good morning. Or, well, I guess afternoon. Feels like morning to me. I have a terrible sleep schedule, and the melatonin I take for that is, uh, yeah, it really kicks my ass. So, let's get into this. I don't want to dawdle too much, because I have a lot of work to do. So, let's, uh, begin. Yep, yep. Okay. Not now. Okay. So let's... Yeah, I don't want to work with this, so let's hit the reset rocket. And... You know, I'm gonna do it like this. Uh, I'm gonna start out by setting up the basic structure of the worlds. So, for, for right now, I'm working on just world one uh, in... And just we're gonna work on the structure for the levels, and then we will make some of the levels, maybe? Okay, so let's see. Nope, nope, not like that. So we are going to start out by saving a bunch of random levels, I believe. Yeah, okay. Sorry, it's been a minute. I don't uh, quite recall the interface, so how much? Okay, we got tons of room here. All right, um, now we're gonna start over here. Um, okay, so we're gonna call this one 1-5, one because it's lava, right? Well, okay, let's actually, we can change the theme, so I'm just gonna, for now, we're just gonna call them 1-1. One, one. Uh, Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna save, let's say eight. I'll save like eight of them and then I'm gonna just kind of title them out and work from there. Two. And I can always add more if I need to. Be just a minute. I'm gonna kind of treat these worlds each. Uh, I don't want to say screenplay necessarily, but basically, like, I'm gonna structure them kind of like a movie, or at least like a story, you know? Um, 
how well that'll work or not, well, we'll see, but just gotta get all these set up first. I'm gonna re- basically to structure this, I'm gonna rename these as I go. So let's see. Uh, one, seven. And... One, eight. Oh, okay. So that gives us a beginning. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to load. All right, we'll start like this. So we have eight levels here. We're gonna go with eight. My idea, my idea is the invasion of the Mecha Koopas, because Mecha Koopas are now in this and they have quite a few varieties. So it's all going to be themed around Mecha Koopas and kind of mechanization. So let's see. I'm going to. Hmm. You know, actually, I think I'm going to do nine here. Uh, make a new course. Whatever this. Yeah, but sure. Save as one dash nine. Okay. So starting out, we're gonna start with one one. And we're gonna say that this is, you know, the the beginning of the story. Everything's happy, everything's cool, so there'll be maybe a little touch leading off to what's actually going on. So let's see, we're gonna start with the game style. What style do I want? I usually go Super Mario World, but I'm thinking... Mm, yeah, let's do Mario World. That's just the one I end up liking the most. And we're gonna go with the classic ground style. Okay, so not auto-scroll. Timer. Let's bump it up to 500, keep it easy. Um. No clear condition yet, so we're gonna we're gonna take that and we're gonna do save as oh let's say save as uh, okay let me try that again <laughs> sorry save as let's say the beginning. Not being super creative yet, but we'll work on this. Okay, so we're gonna start with the beginning. Everything's cool. Uh, there might be like one Mecha Koopa at the end that'll give us the idea of like, well, maybe this stuff isn't going so great in the Mushroomed Kingdom. So let's load. Now let's hop to five. So by five, it's gonna be the midpoint. So it's gonna be a boss battle. We're gonna have a mini boss. Um. We'll make the mini boss Iggy, because obviously Iggy is my guy. So he's going to be kind of the red herring of like, oh, he's the one who's mechanizing everything. But that's going to be kind of a misdirection here. So let's see. Uh, we're going to keep that there. We'll hit it to 300 so it's a little harder. Um, then let's see. So we will save as... Uh, the <laughs> I can't I can't resist the Phantom Menace because that's that's pretty much what we got here. So, um, the Phantom Menace. Okay, so. That's what we'll put this as. Then, let's see. 
Um, we're gonna load up. We'll call one nine. Uh, catharsis. We'll call it synthesis. Um, because at this point, okay, so. To explain my idea, the idea is that it's going to be sort of a slow invasion of mechanization that goes across this first half, and then it's going to be, uh, it's going to go to Iggy Koopa, who they're going to fight, and it's going to be like, okay, we, we fixed it, solved everything, got the big bad, it was his thing all along. Then, the next level, you're going to go back to home, and when you're there, it's gonna drop into fully mechanized world. Everything's been s fucked over. Everything sucks. J complete despair. So then, the level after that is just gonna be destroying Mecha Koopas. Just pure anger, revenge, all of that. Level after that, we're gonna have uh, the, the Mecha Koopa homeland. And we're gonna get a little bit of perspective and realize that maybe they're not enemies, maybe they're just trying to make things work in this place that they're being forced to. And so by the end, both lands will synthesize and be living in harmony. How I'm gonna do that? I don't know, it's gonna be tricky, but that's that's my, my plot, at least. So let's go, this is gonna be called, wait a minute. So we're gonna go... Synthesis is gonna be the final level. And this is gonna be more of a... You know, more of a, um... It's gonna be more... Of like a... Like an epilogue, I guess? You know, it's gonna be one of those sort of story levels that you see sometimes. There was a great one, which was like a Koopa's love story. That, it was so simple, but it, greatest love story ever told. It, it was great. I don't know if you can find that. I should track that down at some point. Uh, but I loved it. I loved it a lot. So, um, so that's gonna be synthesis. In fact, uh, let me actually change the style to more airship. Yeah, we'll go with the Howl's Moving Castle ending of, like, everybody's chilling out on a flying castle. So, we'll save this as Synthesis. Overwrite as Synthesis. There we go. Um, okay. So, that's the main blocks. And actually, I don't like doing this so early in the stream, but uh, I have to take a biology break, so I will be RB.
Okay, I am back. Let me check on... Let me just open up Messenger for this. I have a friend who might be dropping in on a call um, to kind of talk while I'm going through this, which would be especially helpful because he's actually a writer. And since I'm structuring this like a story, uh, it would be quite helpful. Uh, let me actually just lock that in. Okay. My chair locks, so I can uh, be looking at... Whoop! Did not mean to do that. Let me just... Okay. Uh, whoop. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, so. Let's see. So we have nine worlds to work with here, and so far I have a beginning, I have a middle, and I have an end. So let's say, okay, so in the beginning, things are all chill, and there's a little hint of what's going to happen. I'm going to say in two, we're going to slip into the second act? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So, okay. One, two... Things are going to get kind of more mechanized, and it's going to be a little more obvious that something's a little funky. Let's say that's still ground. Um, and we'll call this one... Let's see, save as... Mm, the turn. Yeah? No, I'll save the turn for number three, I think. So, we'll call this... Uh, Encroaching danger. Okay. It's it's interesting going with the um with the whole world thing because it's like before if you're building a single level you have uh all this room to work with within whoop. Uh oh. Yeah, dang it. Okay, let me let me fix that. Um, if you are building a level, you have like just this smaller space that you're working in. But now it's like I have I have like a ton of space across multiple levels that I'm working within. So I gotta I gotta keep it consistent, and I gotta work on uh, the the tension and the the build. I'm real curious how this is gonna go. Alright, and then we're gonna call 1-3 the turn, and I'm gonna make that an airship level, where we're kinda realizing just how big of a thing this is. Um, actually, airship? Airship, okay. So this is when the danger really, really starts to ramp up as we realize just what's going on with it. All of this, so we're gonna call this the turn. And that's where we're going to tease the uh, the red herring with Iggy Koopa, which you're not gonna actually have to fight, but you will see in the background at least. And so that's going to lead up to everything, so that's going to be kind of a kind of a twist. So we're going to go from there back down. So we'll say sky? No, we'll say ground, but you start in the sky, I think. Yeah, yeah, let's go with ground. Um, hmm, actually, is that going to work? Uh... I'll, 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 I'll start with sky so I at least remember that it's supposed to start in the sky. And then we will save that as... Uh... Uh... Confronting... Danger. Okay, and that will lead into the midpoint, the uh, the the Phantom Menace, because I can't, 
I can't help myself. It's too perfect of a phrase for this. So then... We go into that, and we think everything's cool, so this one is going to be a ground level. Um, this one's going to be a ground level, but then when you go to uh, part two, this theme is going to be... We're going to go horizontal. Um, we're going to make this theme... Mm, underground? I don't know about underground. Castle. Yeah, we'll go castle. Uh, well, I want it to be open, but like... Let's make... Uh, okay, for this one we're gonna go... We're gonna put it as castle, so I remember this part's supposed to be threatening. Um, okay, so then we're gonna go from... We're gonna save this as... Uh... Ooh, eh, wait, 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 mm. over right, we're gonna make this one the re reveal, yeah, reveal works, for now, I, these aren't gonna be the final names, this is just basically like putting sticky notes up on like a chalkboard so that I can work out the structure and then later I'll actually, as I'm working on them, I'm gonna adjust so let's see, so that's the reveal, then this one, this one's going to be interesting, um, Fury, so this one's going to be, like, actually going into the Mecha Koopa's homeland and just pure rage, pure catharsis, just destroying everything, and it's going to be hard, you know, you're going to have to actually go through some trials to do it. Um, so let's see, we're gonna call this one Fury, and this will be the one that has the, uh, the, the boss of the level, so it, it's, the boss is gonna be in level 7, but then we're gonna have two more stages for storytelling purposes that are gonna be shorter, so I'm not gonna go nuts with them, but, um, Uh, we're gonna call this one. We're gonna make this one a underground level. So it's still kind of threatening, but it's it's more serene. And we're gonna call this one uh, devastation. As we go through the Mecha Koopa's homeworld, and we realize like, oh, oh, they were just like, they were just looking for safety and we completely misunderstood every time every time so let's see um devastation we'll call it devastate devastation uh i don't remember how to spell devastation dev ast there it is devastation okay I, spelling is not my best suit when I'm, like, well-rested, and right now I am not. And then synthesis is going to be all of the, all of it coming together. So let me look over this. So the beginning, when, the beginning when it's just kind of a standard Mario level with hints of danger, encroaching danger, which is when it's, it's kind of more clear, like, oh, we there's something going on, like, we need to deal with this. The turn, when it's for certain we're realizing just the extent of it, that's going to be the airship level, because it's going to be the Mecha Koopas coming through, and, like, actually, um, like, uh, like, airshipping over here. And we'll get, like, a, a tease of the, the, the mid-boss the red herring boss, which is going to be Iggy Koopa. Then, after that, confronting danger, it's going to start... And, in fact, let me go into that one. Uh, it's going to start out as an airship, because it's uh, the airship from the first bit. Then we're going to switch over, and it's going to become... 
Um, oh, shoot. Actually, I should have done that vertical. Uh, should have done that vertical. Can I change that? I haven't actually used Mario Maker in a minute, so I don't remember. Ah, vertical. Okay. We're going to make that one vertical. We're going to start it at the top, so it's coming down into the castle. So, from the airship into the castle, and then... From there, we are dropping in to the castle level with the Phantom Menace. The red herring, the... Yeah, it's gonna be... We're gonna go in, we're gonna fight Iggy Koopa, you win, everything's awesome, it feels great, and then in the reveal, you're back home, everything's cool, you think, but then you go through a pipe, and then you realize it's all been taken down while you were gone, while you weren't there. Fury is gonna be going and just wrecking shop, pure catharsis, pure just vengeance, anger. After Fury is devastation when you see what actually the, the Mecha Koopa's homeland is like and what, and you realize that like, you're actually the monster in this. And then Synthesis is going to be an epilogue where you just kind of, you're living together now. So that should make a solid world. Okay, um, so with that said, we're going to work on the beginning. I think that's a solid enough structure. Took about a half hour. Now the actual game. So, first things first, let's set up the palette. Um, let's see. Nope, nope, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, that's it? Yeah, okay. We're gonna unpin all of these because I'm gonna use some other stuff. Okay, uh, pipe. Yeah, we'll hang on to the pipe. Uh, we're not gonna need this yet. Nope, nope. Uh, why? Let's see, we're gonna want, instead of that, let's have a couple of mushroom platforms. It is the mushroom, uh, kingdom after all, so let's, let's theme this bit after mushrooms. And then, can I, I wanna pin that there? Nope, nope, that's not what I meant to do. How do I switch this out? Oh, man. It's been a little too long since I played Mario Maker. Uh, that one. Yeah? No. Oh, what am I doing wrong here? How do I change the palette? Nope. Doing this, doing this wrong. Uh... <coughs> Hold on, I'm an idiot. I need to, I need to uh, look at the play guide. Um, course maker, sound effects. Okay, palette, palette. Recently used parts are lined up here. Press and hold. Okay, so it is just the recently used ones. So I'm gonna have to just drop a mushroom in to put it on the pallet. Then we're gonna lock that in. Uh, lock in the ground. Lock in the pipe and this guy. Uh, let's lock in, let's lock in the spring as well. I think I'll use a spring. These spiky balls, no thank you. Mm, yeah, and then let's also semi-solid platform. Drop that in so that we can get it in the pallet. Yep. And then probably, probably a steep slope, gentle slope. Uh, let's go with gentle and steep. I'm gonna have some inclines. Okay. And then we're gonna go with this. Just drop that in to get into the palette. Okay, and then I have four more slots. So let's see. I don't want this to be too muddied. Uh, let's put some question mark block. For a brief moment. 
Um. Mm, one of these. Uh, probably a cloud block, because I wanna, I want to at least bring about the theme of uh, the airship and such early on. So that's a good way to do that. And I have one more spot. I'm going to. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna remove the checkpoint because I really only need to do it the one time. So that leaves me two more slots. We're gonna go with. Oh, oh yeah, the power balloon. Um. Well, you know what? I'm gonna be using my boy Spike in this, so I'm gonna. Oh, finger cursor, there we go. So I'm gonna drop him in. And one more thing. What do I want as a secondary enemy? Uh. Hmm. Spike and Spike Top, maybe. Ah, oh, Galoomba! Yeah, let's add the Galoomba in there. Okay. Now that we have the uh, the palette, I'm gonna just delete all of these. To uh, wait, wait, wait. get out of here, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. No, can't do it. Okay. So let's see. So, Mario, you can hang out here. Um, okay. I believe if you hit minus... Nope, minus is play. What was the... There was a specific thing that you could do to bring Mario, like, straight to your cursor. Uh, what was it? Um, it's probably in the play guide. So let me read that real quick. Palette, like the parts. Um, right. Uh, start. Do, 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 do. Okay. That should do it. We're actually gonna get that out of here. Okay, so this is gonna be a pretty standard Mario level, so we're gonna just start it right in the usual spot. Maybe a little higher. Yeah, let's go just a touch higher. Then we're gonna start building out the landscape. Let's see. So, st standard design would dictate that we gotta, we gotta, uh, miss a spot? No. Uh, that we got to keep a safe space for introducing mechanics. So let's just make a little flat area for this first first region here. We're going to make it just kind of flat. And when you get over here, you're going to get kind of a gentle slope going up. Um... Just a little bit. Not so high that you can't tell what's going on. Um, not too long. We're just gonna drop that in here. We're gonna put a spike right up top there. Just chillin'. He'll throw a spike down. You can jump over that. In fact, if we wanna really make it, like, safe, Oh, oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna base this first level on uh, spike and springs. So you have to like spring at a specific point to hop over the spike. Uh, let me see actually how his spikes like interact with springs. Nope, okay, they go right through. So you just gotta kind of whoop, and you, and you would bop him. Yeah, like that. Okay, so the spikes go right through the springs, so I'm gonna call it that. Uh, let's see. Okay. 
So we're going to base this one on springs and spikes. And... I actually want to... Hold on. Uh, let me see... Let me take Spike out for a minute. Let me see how far you can jump off the spring. I want it to feel, like, good. Uh, whoops. Gotta get Mario out of the wall. I want it to feel good when you, like, land on the spikes. So, like, I want you to be able to come up, hit the spring, land right on him. Okay, so about there. So I want it to just be a quick whoop Bam! Okay, that'll be pretty cathartic, so... Let's hit it with one of those. Let's play real quick. whoop Bam! Nice. Okay, that feels good. Okay, so... We start with that, and then we're gonna go from that. After you do that, there'll be a steep slope, so you can do a quick little... Yeah, we'll base it off spikes and springs and galoompas and slopes. Whoops. Uh, this way? Oh, not there, though. Uh, hold on. Let's flip that around. Snap that in there. And we'll do that. And we're gonna do some of this. Da -da -da -da. That'll be this next square. Okay, so we're introducing the dangerous elements in safe ways. Uh, yes, I did that correctly. Sorry, my phone is like right in front of my monitor in that exact middle spot. So it's kind of hard to see. Okay, so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna pop couple of Galoombas up on this slope. Okay. So then let's play. And then you just... Nice. Feels good. Whoop. Okay. So if you don't get Spike, it makes it more dangerous for you. Okay. So that's a good way to introduce all that. And then we're going to go with an optional pipe here. That's one thing I don't see in a lot of these um, Mario Maker worlds as much is pipes that are optional a lot of times it's like they they people set it up so they're like you have to do the pipe and i don't i don't get uh why you'd want to do that there's so many optional pipes in uh regular mario brothers so we're gonna go two we're gonna make this horizontal and we're actually gonna make this sky themed okay and then I think what we're gonna do, um, oops, uh, finger cursor. So we're gonna make a nice little pad here. Get Mario out of the way so that I can pop the pipe down. Okay, and then we're going to, uh, um, yes. Okay, and then that will be. Um, uh, shoot, uh, no, 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 I want to do it to this pipe, yeah. Okay, I did that wrong, <laughs> hold on, um, I want this one. Hmm. Okay, if that's the case, actually, I will move the pipe out of the way to make it more clear that it's optional. So we're gonna... I'm gonna bust this up here. Scoot that over so I can see. Keep... Up. Mm. There's some things that... There's some things about this design, at least with controller, that have always kind of kind of frustrate me a little bit, and that's that's one of them. Okay, so we'll put this up here. We'll actually have that hanging off a, the side of a mushroom. Uh, but I want to 
hold on, I want to make this up here. I want to make that, you know, tall. Let me make it taller. There it is. And we're going to make it a little longer. Like that. So the pipe's just leading up into that. Um, and... Hmm, can you actually make it over there? Hold on. Let me, uh... Mario. Whoops. Uh... How do you get Mario back to your hand? Where am I at? Where's Mario at? He is in the wall. Hold up. Mario! Okay. Okay, so we bop, and then we... Oh! The Goombas move a little too fast for that. Okay, so we're gonna pop them back here. Okay, so then... Let's pull Mario back here. And then, whoop, whoop, and you bop, and then you zoop. Okay. But, if you decide not to, to zoop, then, whoop, put that back, oh, whatever. You can get up to here, and I'll put some, put some goodies up there, I think. So we're gonna put, uh, we're gonna put a couple of these. And I'll put them out of the way, so you have to actually, like, be like, what's up there? get at him. Okay. Then I'm gonna... What's... Oh, it's Y! Y is what moves Mario to your pointer. Okay. So we're gonna put him there, and then we're gonna hit Y, and we're gonna... Oh, what goodies should we have up here? Let's... Let's make one a cape feather. Just gonna... Just gonna... Cut. Whoop. One is a cape feather, and then the other... We'll just make a, one of those ten coins. Oh, can I not drop the ten coin in? Okay, that's fine. Uh, then we gotta use classic coins. Uh, we're gonna pop that in there. It's just the one coin, so I gotta... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I believe 10 is the max you could have. So let's pop all of those guys in there. Oops. Get out of here. Pop in those coins in the thing. Okay, and we'll work on the, the upper area later, but I'm going to continue this lower area for now. Ah, oh, I wanted that bush. Dang it. Okay, that's fine. Um. <coughs> oh. Let me get some water. Gotta stay hydrated, kids. <sighs> okay. So, you can do that. And you continue up that way let's let's toss a couple of a couple more mushrooms in here oh wait i have to put them up at the top height so if you continue over this way you can get to like a really uh, nice wide mushroom and there'll be a upper and lower area which would be nice if you come up here you will run into some to another spike in fact, we'll make it three spikes, and have a spring right there. Okay, so then let's uh, let's test that out. Come over and whoop, and uh, yep, and then whoa. But then oh, I see that there's the stuff up there, so then we go whoop over. Oh, what'd I get? Oh, it's a, it's a feather. Okay. Oh, and then I see the spikes coming at me. So I'm, I'm gonna... Whoa. Oh, okay. So they, they can bounce the spike off of the thing. Okay, I'm gonna need to make this slightly lower so that, uh... So that it's more visible. 
Let's, uh... Let me... Make this, like, one block lower. Move all these guys up here onto it. We're actually gonna pop that away, but okay, I gotta remember one, two, three away is where we will see, is where Spike will be able to bounce the thing. Okay, actually, in fact, I think I'm going to put do that on purpose and incorporate that. So let's play. So we bounce. Oh, whoa, watch out. Okay. <laughs> I'm not the best in Mario, so the actual playtesting might be a little funky. Whoa! Once more! Sorry. Oh, oh not the Galoon, but... Whoa, watch out. And then, up. Oh, you're going up. And then we go up here. See the feather. Oh, and then we see that going on. But it just breaks on the pipe, so we know it's safe enough. So we don't have to... Ooh, ooh, watch out. Watch out. Oh, and then you got it. Whoa, whoa, oh. Okay, that's a little challenging. So if you go here, you duck, you can... Okay. Whoa. Okay, and it's only the top one that does that. Whoa. Okay, the timing on that's a little tricky. And then you can get all three. Nice, nice. Okay, okay, so that's definitely a mechanic that we can use here. So, we got those guys going. And then... Well, okay, let's add... Let's add more of the slope stuff. So, I'm actually gonna, like, lift the slope up. So that it meets with this, so that... It's kind of, it's it's two different, like, paths you can go, but they're not, um, they're not totally distinct from each other. You can go with either and still kind of end up at the same key points. So we're going to go with, oh, 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 flip it over, that's the one, and then we're going to do this. Hmm. I need to start it. If I want it to be, I gotta have it be like here, because I want it to be tall. So, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, that works for me. Then we go like this. Nice, nice. Okay, and then we're gonna line this out for like four? Let's try four. Um, that's fine, I'm gonna slap in a steep slope now. So we're gonna, whoop, whoop, a little lower, a little lower please. Lower, and then we're gonna flip it, flip it around. Flip it around right there. Yeah, yeah, we do that. Okay. And then, whoops, that's where I left the ending because I have not touched the length yet. So we're going to want it to be longer than that. So let's, uh... Let's scoot the ending. Another few. In fact, isn't there a faster way to do this? Yeah, I just... Right. Goal. Pop it out. I'll make it like a three-quarter. It doesn't have to be exceptionally long but I want it to be at least substantial you know it should still feel like a first level but it shouldn't feel like um like just a, a tiny level you know and, and, and with the sub area that's not too big an issue okay <sighs> let's see so let's uh, uh, hold on like this yes Sorry, I'm used to using a stylus on the actual, like, touch screen when I do this, and like I said, I'm a little out of practice. I I got back into it because of this, this cool new update. Okay, so then we're gonna toss some Galoombas down here. Okay, and... I'm gonna toss, like... 
four. And we'll actually make them a little taller each time. Curious how that will affect the uh, the sliding. So, okay, let's say we started here. Oh, ignored the spikes, because they're up there. And then we... Oh! Well, what if I didn't jump right there? How would that work? Okay, so we're running, we're running. Here we go. Okay, so as long as you don't stop... It's safe. And if you miss that, you actually have more danger coming from there. Okay. So if you jump or you stop, then they're gonna crush you. Hmm. And we bop bop. Watcha. Okay. And watch out for that. Okay. And let's actually put this here to uh, see how that... Yeah, it springs at you. Whoa, watch out. And then you can watch out. Whoops. Okay. So then, whoop, watch out. Oh, there it is. Okay, and then you, whoop, watch out. You can gloom. Okay, I feel like I should, well, the fact that you just keep going. Let's make, like, a longer line of gloombas here. Let's make them, like, like, four in a row again. Because I want to at least make it clear, like, if you don't stop, you can get them all. But if you do stop... Oh, watch out! Oh, he's coming! And then we... Whoop. Oh! Oh, boy! Okay, uh... Shoot. Um, okay, I think I want to scoot... <coughs> I want to scoot everything one over. It's good that I realize this now, rather than later, but, uh... Yeah, this is unfortunate. Okay, so I need... I need it to be seven blocks across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... It is seven across. Wait, how far across is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Huh. Wait a minute. So why is that... Let me think this out. Oh! It's because the mushroom's in the wrong spot for that. So, okay, let's, um, let's scoot this Galoomba out of the way, scoot this over one, toss that up there. Okay, and then I think that should, so we, oop, and then you watch out, Spike's got the ball, okay, and then we, oop, hmm, well now I want to make sure, oop, da -da -da. Uh, I want to make sure there's enough room to be able to... You can see him do it, Whoa. but then... Yeah. Oh, but now the Galoombas are coming too fast. Okay, um... Let's pop this section over one. So let me just grab the slope. Pop it up. Wait, actually, let me... Pop it over two to make room. Pop it up a little bit. Put spike up top. Put this right here. And then we will make this slope a little bit longer. Okay. And then we will... Oh, watch out, buddy. Watch out, little Galoomba. Okay. And then we will pop that in there. And uh, fill that all in. Okay. And this is now one, two, three, four, five. So we gotta make space for some more. So let's. Uh, oops. Let's. Whoa, what did I do there? Uh, let's 
drop that back down. Let's actually pop that up, I think. How many spaces does it give? One, two, three, four, five. Five stone. Okay, so we need it to be just slightly over here. Um, why is that not... Oh, because it's running into the other slope. Uh, so let's pop that over. Let's pop this over. So that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So that works. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Okay, so this still is going to work out. I just got to scoot the whole situation over, like, a couple. Let's... Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm pretty sure... Nope, nope, nope. Shoot, how do I... Yes, multi-grab. That's what I need. Okay. Uh, whoops, copy is not what I wanted. Okay, so multi-grab is... Gotcha. Okay. And let's, uh, un-multi-grab these. Okay. So that should give us that. Let's move that over. Um, there, that should work. Ooh, and then I gotta... Okay. I'll just multi-grab the whole lot. Bring him up. Nice. Okay. So then we're gonna... Well, I'll just fill it in. And then... I should probably make sure the slope works before I do that. Eh, whatever. Okay, and then... I really like how these play off of each other, though. I don't want to... Well, okay, let's see how it works first before I start changing that. So... Oh, whoa, oh, he's coming. Oh, and then you watch out, and then you... Whoa, oh, and you can get him right in time. Yep, and you can get the Galoomba. Oh, you can still get those guys, but then watch out. And then... Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Oh. All right. And that helps us out. Cool. Okay. And then if you're here, still... Oh, I guess it doesn't anymore. Oh, right, because I moved this. Well, okay. Um, Let's scoot this back over. Hold on. So is it here that it happens? So if they throw it... That's it. Okay. So it has to be relative... One, two, two diagonal blocks from there. So... Hmm. Ah, uh, do I want to complicate it that much? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's, um, okay. So let's... Stop, stop, stop. Um, let's scoot this over here. And then, gotta put it there. Then let's copy this. Put it down here. Oh, and then we'll shorten it. All right, whoops. We'll shorten it just a touch. So they can still be kind of like linked up like that. Then, ooh, if I hit another spring up he right here. Does that still work? Okay, let's see how that plays out. Okay, if I'm right here, do they even throw one? No, it's not close enough for him to activate. 
Oh, and then they just... Okay, weird. Um... Hmm, okay, so let's... Well, there's no reason to make it that long, then. So let's, like, shorten it up. Pop it over. And then, ooh, let's actually make it, yeah, do this. Let's see if I can get it to, like, double bounce. And we'll just shrink that up. And then we'll put Mario right here. Now, is that close enough to trigger them? Is that close enough? No, it does not look like it. But okay, when they trigger... It goes there. It goes, goes there. Oh, and that's... Hit. What? That hit me? That hit me. Oh, yeah, I messed up the ratio here. Okay. Oh, so this needs to be... A touch shorter. So let's make that just a... A little bit shorter. All right, it needs about two. Then we will place this here. Um, does that do it? Because I was really liking the, the move there. Yeah? Okay, let's watch. Okay, so it is breaking. Um, will it do that if I scoot this over still? Bounce. Bounce. No, that comes right at you. Hmm. Well, yeah, I think we're gonna have to delete this second spring. I will keep that in mind, though. I do want it to do a double spring thing at some point. And, oh, wow, I've already been going for over an hour. Oof, yeah, this is gonna be a many-part stream. <laughs> um, I'm doing as much as I can right now, but... Yeah, I want to take up my whole day doing this, but we'll see. Okay. Let's see. So, okay, if I do it like this, it spits it, goes, rolls down there, and then breaks. Okay, it does break. I need them to be closer, but I can definitely do that with this. Okay. Alright, so let's make this two shorter. Whoops, 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 whoops. Let's drop these guys here. So it's not really about the distance. So let's see, if I do this... Yes, okay, that, that triggers them. And it goes down there harmlessly. Um, I think mostly harmlessly. Pretty sure if I stand, like, right... Okay, if you stand right there, it does that... Ah. It's not quite what I wanted. I liked how they were crushing. Okay, okay, so let's start this from the beginning and see how that works out. Oh, and you watch out. He's gonna get you. Okay, and then you go there. Oh, the Galoombas. Oh, but then once you go on there... Oh, you see the guys. Whoa! Watch out! Hmm, sometimes it breaks on the pipe and sometimes it doesn't. I wonder, I wonder what the difference is. Well, that's okay, because I can make it, um... What I'll do is I'll have it just gently deflect off the pipe, I think. Yeah, so let's make this... Hmm, let's make this back here. See what that does. So he's gonna spit it, it's gonna go, and it's gonna break on the pipe. Okay. So I guess that's the difference, is whether or not it directly breaks on the pipe. And then you use it, whoa! Okay, so that's a death region. Do not want that, exactly. So, okay, he goes, spits it, spit, spits it. There he goes. And you just gotta jump. Oh, watch out. Oh, but you can go in the thing. Oh, watch out. Mmm. It's a little tall. That could be a problem. Uh. Uh, okay. So let's scooch. 
<sighs> Let's scooch everything over just real gentle like. And then um, then we're gonna do this down. I need it to I need it to be shorter. Um, so let's delete. Whoops! Undo. Delete just these bits. Okay, and then we're gonna finger cursor. Uh, whoops, whoops, whoops. Um No, I wanna erase that. Okay. And then we're gonna do this. And then we're gonna do that guy. Okay. Uh, display buttons so I can get this back. Close that off. Okay, okay, so that's closer. Uh, let's just scooch everything down. Just one. Just one. Okay, and uh, I grab, yep. And then actually, I think I want these to be slightly shorter. Right? And how did that affect up here? We can just, uh, we can just make that shorter. Yeah, let's just make that shorter. And then we'll multi-grab. Okay, and then we'll go over here, start the level. So we're going, oh, there's Spike, and he bounces the thing, oh, oh, and then you get the Galoombas. Oh, there's Spikes up there. There's also Secrets, so let's, oh, it doesn't quite get you. Okay, watch out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Timing on this is real tricky. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, timing on that is pretty tricky. Um, gonna work that one out. Whoa! Watch out. Whoa. Uh oh. Okay. So we'll just say, oh, you got Spike. Get the Galoombas. Whoa. And you see that sneaky secret up there. Why is that? Why is this one so much faster? Hmm. Well, do I want a stack of spikes then? Is that why it's faster? Uh, let me let me test out a couple things here. Let me let me put him just um let me just put him on like another skinny mushroom. Which, whoa, whoa. Uh, finger, yes. Um, let's make that, was that as narrow as it gets? That's fine. Uh, ooh, or is that fine? Uh-oh, will that still do the thing? Let's watch. Nope, nope, nope. It doesn't. That makes it more of a hazard. Okay, uh... Let's get rid of this one then. And let's pick the other mushroom. And I think if I just sit him on top of that. Yeah? Yeah, it still does the thing. And how fast does he do it? Okay, so yeah, he does do it faster if he's a stack of three. Okay, that's good to know. Oof. He's tricky. But I've seen worse. So let's make this mushroom uh, taller so that it's not so weird. Blech. And we'll just sit him right on top there. Sitting on top of his mushroom. Look at this little guy. Look at this little guy. I love Spike. Spike is my favorite Mario enemy by far. I also have an affinity for Iggy Koopa, because, I mean, my name's Iggy, so, 
you know, just meshes. But, uh, yeah. Alright, let's play. So we're going. Whoa, watch out. Oh, and you can even get it a little early if you do it just right. Okay, and then, oh, there's a little secret. So let's get the secret. Whoa. Oh, and that's a bunch of coins. Okay, and then he's, he's going. Oh, 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 it's tricky. Now it's a little tricky. Then if you have this, yeah, you can still get him. Oh, more Galoombas. Okay. And you gotta keep going. Cool, okay. So that's a solid first section here. Where does that take me? Like, how far into the level am I? That is... That's about a halfway point. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad as far as the the four-part dealy goes. Whatever it is. I, I don't remember. Um, okay, so we got spikes. We got Goombas. So now... We gotta ramp up the difficulty some. I've already given them the, the more dangerous ones. So let's ramp up the difficulty with an actual ramp. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Up. Up. Maybe around. No. No, I want flip that way. Then you go up. Up! Okay. So we're gonna ramp it up. And this time, we're gonna put a, a couple stacks of spikes. Let's see, about halfway up. Stack. Stack. Oops, move him down. And then we're gonna set up some springs to do some wacky things. Um. If I do this right, will it go over, or will it just crush him? Well, we'll find out. Okay. So, let's start up here, see how this works out. Whoa! Oh, up. Whoa, and they're coming. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, you gotta watch out. Oh boy. Okay, so the second I'm gonna have to actually Hold on, let's for a brief time, let's get these Galoombas out of here so that I can test some stuff. Send you boys up there. Okay, so play. So let's see, how does the arc work? So it goes bounce. Bounce. Okay, so the bounce doubles up. So actually, I want to put this down here. So then, when it happens, it's bounce. No, no, no. Gotta put one back. Okay. So how's this? Bounce. Bounce. There. Okay. So that works out. So then let's see here what happens. Bounce. Ooh, okay, it takes them out. So, let's, um, oops, I meant to hit, uh, delete. Okay, so let's, let's work this out. Uh, we got, uh, let's see, one, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five apart. So we're gonna have to do one, one, two, three, four, five. There. And then we will put this stack back a bit because I believe they'll be safe enough here. And that hits them right there. And that's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And I'll snap. All right, so then if we jump in here, that one goes bow, bow. That one goes boing, boing. Yes! Yes! Okay! So now it's tricky, but it's... Whoop. Okay, it might be doable. Let me actually test how hard this is, because it looks neat. Ooh, watch out! Ooh, watch out! Oh, whoa. 
Okay, okay. Whoop. Oh, okay. Spikes are tricky guys, so let's uh... Okay. Alright, then we gotta wait for the right moment. Whoop, watch out. Whoop, oh. Okay. So let's try this one out. Oh, what? Uh, okay. And then we can do that. Nice. Okay, so it's still tricky, but it still feels like a first level puzzle, you know? Okay, cool. So with all of that, let's move these guys back over here. Nice, and then let's actually, uh, let's hit it from the beginning. So, play. Alright, so, I'm running along. It's Mario's do. Whoops, watch out! Watch out, he's gonna get you! Eh, whoop! The Gloombas. Oh, and then there's a guy up there. Well, I can just avoid it and not get those, uh, bonuses. Whoa, Gloombas. Whoa! What's this situation? Okay, okay, whoa, watch out. Ooh, I don't know how that plays out. Okay, so, let's say, okay, so I'm going along, whoop, there's Spike, watch out, he's gonna get you, okay, and then you gotta, whoop, get the Gloombas, and then we go over here, get these guys, and then, whoop, watch out, this is a whole other situation, okay, you just gotta time it out just right, get him, whoop, okay, and then we, oh, he went a little faster that time, Okay, that's pretty solid so far. I'm liking that. Um, so with that, let's actually make another Galoomba bit here. Uh, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, and we'll make it three. Da -da 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 -da. We will this time. Um, this time I'm going to. I'm gonna make it so that you have to stop at a certain point to survive. So let's say... Um, let's say... Yeah, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One. And then one, two. So if you do this... Let's see. So let's say you start over here, and you're doing this. So you go, and then you, oh, okay, uh, still survive. So that's not quite the uh, Tower of Terror I thought it was. Uh, whoop, get out of here. Keep hitting Y to delete. I'm trying to think of why I might be doing that. What game do you delete with Y? Okay, and we will actually, uh, uh, whoop. Get him out of the way. Drop another guy there. So then, let's see. Is this what I want it to be? Whoop. Oh, and then if you stop under those guys. Okay. But then, what if you... Whoops. God. Why do I keep hitting Y to delete? That's not what you do in this one. I don't even know which one it is that does that. Okay. So if you go... Okay, if you keep going, you just die, so you gotta stop earlier. Good, okay, so. We're gonna stop. Nope, okay. Um, well, what if we delete this and then you gotta jump over that one? Let's see how that works out. Okay, so then you jump, jump! Okay. That's good. That's good. That's that's getting us where we want to go. So, okay. I'm going to put a checkpoint here because that's the spot that feels like it might be a little tricky. Um, and I don't want people to feel like they're being tricked. You know? Uh, where is the checkpoint? Uh, my children. Especially my boy, Iggy Koopa. 
It looks like I'm doing that. Iggy Koopa. That's my guy. We're gonna use this guy, but not yet. Uh, I did not actually grab the checkpoint flag. Uh, where, where is that? There it is, checkpoint flag. Okay, uh, get out of there, Mario. Little checkpoint flag. So, you get past this bit, it'll bring you right back up here. And then, you gotta go, because the spikes are right behind you, but then you can keep going. So that way, if you do die on this part because you didn't quite get it, um, it doesn't feel quite as, you know, nonsense. So let's save. Cool. Um, okay. And then, uh, with that, I'm gonna take a quick biology break again. And then we will be back to this. So, let's check it out. Okay, I am back. Let me get the uh, camera back on. There we go. <clears throat> ah. I'm gonna at least finish the mechanics of this level uh, before I call it for today. But I am gonna be working on the. This is gonna be like a long project. I have I have the structure down and I have the uh, the ideas down. Uh, and then I will work on more embellishment later, I think. So let's see, we got that idea going. So, gotta give you enough room to get out of that. So let's pop a couple more in here. And then, we're gonna do the real gauntlet with these, uh, these spiky guys. So let's... Let's get that going. Uh, oh, okay. All right, that's too tall. You need to be able to jump onto that. In fact, let me uh, let me find out. Okay, I'm gonna drop it, drop Mario up here. Okay, so you're coming off of this. Whoop, and you got it. Up, oh, messed up a little bit. Okay, let's try that again. All right, you're going, you're going, and you jump. Okay, so where did I land there? There. Okay, so. Let's hit a mushroom right about here to make it wide enough that you'll just land straight on it. Yeah, yeah, that feels nice. Okay, and then we're going to make a gauntlet similar to some of the earlier sections here. So it's not going to be too hard, you know, still like first level stuff, but it's going to be... Um, it's gonna be spikes. Spikes throwing spike at the balls. Because that is what those guys do. Alright, now I gotta remember the balls go in a straight diagonal, two paths. Um, okay, I guess I gotta make it shorter. So, okay, I want it to be like a, a descending staircase kind of thing. 
So let's hit it here. Uh, oops. Okay. And then we'll get like that. And then we will drop our guys. Um, drop our guy right here on his own little mushroom. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. uh, finger cursor, finger cursor, give it to me, yes, yes, uh, nope, nope, no, no, okay, uh, uh, shoot, yeah, I gotta make it tall before I put it on, uh, whoops, let's make that one shorter, so I can drop it under him, and then, I'll actually drop a string right there. Okay. So let's uh let's play out this section real quick. Ooh, jump and oh, oh, he's coming. Watch out. And that will go. Yeah, that'll go right at your feet if you're not quick. So then we uh, jump, get him. Okay. That's pretty good. Uh, let's make this mushroom actually wider so that it can meet with the next mushroom over here. Uh, what's the widest these can go? That's the widest? Okay. And we're gonna do like different colors for these and stuff. For now, it's just structural. Then we'll do a three stack of spike right here. I'm gonna have a yep, and then one, two, three, four, five. Have another yep. And then that will lead to three stack over here. Oops, it's gotta be high enough that Mario can jump. Jump to it. I don't want to, like, make it too impossible. Um, whoop, I guess we're going to move the end a little further. Let's go one more screen. One more screen should do it. Whoops. Stop, stop. We'll go, like, five into the screen or something. Uh, that's more like eight, but <laughs> close enough. Close enough for jazz. All right. So then we're going to have... Um, a three stack followed by a spring um, whoo this interface is a little a little unintuitive okay three stack followed by a spring followed by a one guy just by himself so you gotta just jump that in fact let's uh let's uh Hop this whole thing up one so that if they do spawn too early, they don't accidentally hit our guy down there. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, I have allergies. Uh, where's my hand sanitizer? There it is. Should probably keep it by the tissues. <laughs> Gotta make sure you sanitize your hands. <sighs> and then drink some water. I'm making pretty good progress. I've spent an hour on this level and it's already structurally pretty cool. I think so anyways. I hope you like it. I've worked pretty hard on it. Okay, and then... And then that's gonna be a slope that goes all the way down here. Where you gotta like, it's gonna be a little silly. Uh, I mean, a lot of this has been really silly. And then let's see, uh, we'll have the Galoombas. 
that's like um we're whoop it. We're gonna do Galumbas. In fact, I'm gonna move my phone because this is mostly gonna be in my blind spot otherwise. Okay, so Galumbas, we're gonna hit it with one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, one. Then you gotta one, two, three. And then you're gonna one, 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 two, one, two, three, four, five. And one last one is like a victory lap. Let me see how ridiculous that is. So let's play through this whole section here. Because the thing is, with the world... Whoop, with being able to make a world, I can actually make the difficulty adaptive. It doesn't have to be, like, a full idea unto itself. Whoa! Okay, missed that. Oh, watch out! He's shooting the spike! Whoa, uh-oh. Oh, no. And then it... Whoa, whoa! Oh! Okay. So that turned into a hot mess real quick. Whoa, you gotta jump it. And then watch out. Oh, you gotta get him. And then you get him. Oh, watch out. Oh, and then it's that guy. Oh, and he's throwing a few. Oh, 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 and now it's all these guys. Ooh. Okay, I think I gotta scoot him one over to make this work. Let's see. Let's... Uh, let, well, let's just start from here, because we know the Galoomba section works. Okay, ooh, watch out! You gotta get him! Excuse me. Oh, now he's too- oh! Let's- Ah, oh, crap, what did I just undo? Oh, no. Uh, well, let's scoot him over. Let's actually make a nice little safe spot for them. Then we can, uh... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Let's make a safe spot, and then, uh, yeah. We'll stretch this out a little bit. Well, let's make a little bit of danger. If you're dumb, you can fall through there, you know? Okay. So let's see how this pans out. So you watch out. Whoa. Always oh, throwing the spike. Okay, watch out. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Well, that's a weird. Okay. Well, that's an oddity. Okay, wait a minute. So those only go about three on a flat surface. So I guess there is some amount of gravity here. Okay, so you jump up here. Whoa, watch out. He's got the spike ball. Okay, then we can jump up here. Ooh, watch out for him. Hmm. And those all go. Some of them hit. Is it even possible to get through this one? Whoa, okay. Gosh. Okay, well, I might not finish this one on this, but I'm gonna at least, like, make it so that it's a full level's worth of stuff. Uh, whoop, and then- Oh, okay. Ooh, if you don't get that spike, then you're gonna have to- you're gonna have some rough times, so, okay. I might want to tone this down, it's a little much. Whoop, whoop. Okay, you gotta just time it out, time it out. Yes, okay. That's a, that's a satisfying timing. Oh, okay, that part got a little ridiculous. Okay, so there's just a timing to it. So it's not it's not the worst. Uh, ooh, let's toss a spring here so that when this spike goes, oh, and then we gotta scoot this over one. Let's do that. And then we are go. Okay, and then you gotta take him out. Okay, and then you 
Oh, get into this little safe spot. And you wait. Wait for the right time to get in here. Oh, okay. Let's... Hmm. Well, how about we... Uh, let's get rid of this guy. And move these two over here. Will they be safe there? A, will they be safe? B, will they be able to... Still hit in the right... The right, correct place. Let's find out. Okay. So we can, we're still safe there. Oh, okay. If I do that, then I gotta... Move you out of the way. Scooch you over here. Play. Okay. And then... Whoa, whoa, watch out. Whoa. Okay, so now there's up... There's gonna be up balls, there's gonna be bottom balls. Spiked balls. That's working out. Okay, watch out. Oh, what? Whoa, 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 oh, whoa, oh. Okay. Maybe, maybe I need to tone this part down a bit. Okay, watch out for him. Get over here. Okay. Whoa, watch out for the spike ball. Uh, get him. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh! Okay, so the fact that their balls, like, hit each other actually gives you a bit more of a chance, so I like that. Whoop, okay. Oh! That's pretty rough. That is pretty rough, but it's also, like, the last major moment of the level, so... I'm okay with that. Okay, let's... Whoa. Oh, got him. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, man. I'm gonna make the ramp a little smoother. Uh, the ramp of the difficulty here, because this is... This is kind of jumping from... Uh, not that bad to... Ooh, that's pretty tricky. Okay. And then... Uh, uh, I should also introduce the fact that they can break the spike balls on each other's stuff earlier on. Okay. Oh, watch out. Okay, and then... Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, jeez. There's so many balls. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I don't want this to be such a sudden jump in difficulty, but, like... Ah, uh, I am really liking this part! No. So let's see, what else do I got? Okay. Uh-oh! I keep jumping the gun on that one. Oh, hold on, gotta text a friend. Oh! Okay, actually. He's, uh, coming in on the thing. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Let me head over to Facebook. Uh. Hopefully this works. Hold on. I'll BRB.
Daddy knows what Baby wants. Baby wants the bottle. Okay, the thank bottle. you for Daddy's... thank you for ruining ruining my my be right back audio. Sorry, anybody listening, we're uh, we're testing something here. I believe I believe that should do it though. I'm pretty sure you are audible on the stream. Sweet. Ah, uh, something with the Elgato is freaking out now. I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna just mute the Elgato audio for a minute because it seems to be having troubles. But that's fine. Okay, so, uh, I don't know if you're looking at the stream, but this is the level I've created so far. I'll actually, I'll do, I... let me do a quick run through. Uh, let me know when you're, when you see me at the beginning. Uh, I see some, a Galumba stack. Okay. I see, oh, now I just see nothing. Okay. There's, there's some trees and a bush and a hill. Okay, so that's the beginning. Uh, I, Mario, hold on. I will uh, show you. Uh, what, what? Do the... Yeah, there's Mario. Say, what, what? Do the b Mario? Mario. Okay. Mario. So, so now I'm going to give you a quick playthrough here. Okay. So we start off here, and we get our first introduction to one of the main enemies of the stage, Spike. And... Yeah. The Galumba slide, which are the two main mechanics that we're going to be using here, is the spikes and the springs and the Galumbas and the sliding. Got some stuff here. With the spikes and the springs and the Galumbas and the sliding, away. Exactly. All right, and then I get that. Whoop, you got to watch out for this one. This introduces them on the stacks. And then we come down here and introduces the fact that if you don't finish the slide, that you will be crushed by the Galumbas falling down. Then we have this. This part's still under construction. Oop. People are complaining about the Revival's new tag team name. Really? Oh, well. What What's their, their contention? Uh, the... <laughs> an independent promotion based out of North Carolina has featured a tag team in faction by the same name. Oh. Revolt is a tag team regularly used by Caleb Conley and Zane Riley in PWX for years. It's one of the promotions recently featured on WrestleTalk's Indie Mania YouTube event and was featured in an article where here on the website, uh, this being WrestleTalk.com. Uh, Conley has wrestled for Impact and TNA as Ooh. well. Uh. So... Ah, uh, uh, they're coming! Ah, uh, the Galumbas! Oh, okay. Well, yeah. They have a point. Uh, the only... Wow, that looks very slow on my end. Slow? Yeah, like, Mario... There's a lot of lag, I think. Lag. Like, you look fine. You look fine. The game is lagging. Oh, yeah, the Elgato is having a little bit of trouble. Um, Like, hmm. I can see your video... Everything's fine. Right. Hmm. Yeah, what is going on with that? Uh, but, let me yeah, see so, if I can... Hold on. Pause. Some Yeah, so somebody points out that... Uh, yeah, they've been in WWE for a while. They've not exactly been keeping up with, you know, team names that were currently in use. But all they had to do to verify that this tag team pre-existed was search pro wrestling T's website. Yeah, that's, mm, it's not, not a so good. And like, I get why they went with the revolt so that they could keep FTR as their you know, right. acronym. Okay. There's still uh, a tiny bit of leg, but I think that, that that's not too bad. This is mostly creation. So the, I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, it looks better now. Okay, yeah, I guess I just the Elgato need to refresh. I my computer is not exactly no is not exactly ideal for uh um for streaming because I don't uh have a t great graphics card on a MacBook. Um, right. but well, it's I mean, it's working. I, that, let's see, like that's what I had right was a MacBook when you and I would stream. Right. And I never had any of the problems you're describing, mostly because I only ever recorded, you know, if someone was on the stream, 
they were in the room with me. Right. I never like pull. I never pulled audio. Um, and if I did, I did it with not the Elgato. I did it with OBS. So. Yeah. Well, actually, I did finally figure out how to make uh, how to make OBS work with the Elgato. It's uh, the 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 plugin that you have to use to make OBS Link work is uh, it, it had an incorrect runtime file, so you have to go into the actual like system files and replace it for it to work, which was a pain, but I, it works now, so I, I not too worried. Ah, uh, I. Trying to figure out a way that want to like lower the difficulty in this area because it gets a little wild. Hmm. So if they want to keep uh, the revolt like the R uh, letter, mm -hmm. here's a word they can change it to. Are you ready? Uh, all right. They can be. They can be the raccoons. Oh. Fear the raccoons. Forever the raccoons. Hmm. Free the raccoons. Okay. I'm, I like free the yeah, raccoons. Yeah. That's a good one. Or instead of free the raccoons, feed the raccoons. Feed them. They are hungry. Whoa, whoa. 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 Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, it I'm, is possible to get... I'm on dictionary.com looking at uh, words. Mm -hmm. And... I don't think dictionary quite understood um, how definitions work, because there's the word rattle, R A D D L E instead of with T's. Right. Rattle, verb, to interweave, waddle. What the fuck does waddle mean? <laughs> It's a number of rods or stakes interwoven with twigs or tree branches for making fences and walls. Uh huh. So it's like, it's a number of poles laid on a roof uh, to thatch, to hold thatch. So it's kind of like when you see people building like a fence or a roof and they've got like that wooden frame that they build onto. Seems right. to be that. Okay. Uh, whoa, whoa. So they could be. Whoa. Oh. What is. Oh boy. Okay. Oh jeez. Oh god. Oh ah. Uh. Oh god. <sighs> I didn't know that a tooth removal was a redectomy. A redectomy? Yeah. How do you spell that? R A D E C T O M Y. Huh. I wonder what a uh, root word that's root rooted in. Uh. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, God. Why did I make this so hard? <laughs> shit, shit. Well, the thing... God damn it. Okay, there's a thing I found out about the spike. So, uh, you've played Mario 3, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay, mean, so you... It's, so, I know that it's a lot of people's favorites. Sure. But I have to ask... Have you ever played any of the other games? Because it sucks. Well, it's it's, it's impressive worst. that it's on the NES because it feels like a game that shouldn't have been possible until the SNES's hardware. So it shouldn't have been. Like, I hate it. It's the least Mario game of all the Mario games. Sure, sure. Well, actually, opinion. there is the whole theory of it being like a stage play, and that being kind of a part of why it's so un Mario. Well. And there's also the two was a dream and blah blah blah. Yeah. So uh, the root word for redectomy being a tooth removal. Uh, noun, plural, radices. It comes from the word radix or radix. Uh huh. Radix. <sighs> it's spelled rad r a d i x. And it's called a radix. Mm -hmm. R e so, uh, and they show you the pronunciation of that by spelling R E Y D I K S, and I'm like, Radix. Isn't that the? Isn't that from the Raylo fantasy <laughs> <or> shipping <laughs> community? Uh, you know. But it's uh, a number taken as the base of a system of numbers, logarithms, or the like. Or in anatomy and botany, a root, a radical. Oh. So it's, referring specifically to the roots of the teeth right 
Uh, let me see how this... Because, okay, so what I was going to say is Spike, this enemy, who is my favorite Mario enemy, uh, I've realized he throws these spike balls, right? But the two things uh -huh. that happen when you have two of them close to each other is A, the spike balls can take out the other spikes, and B, if they throw, the spike balls can take each other out. Like, if two spike balls collide, they just shatter. So, I'm thinking that the one of the larger mechanics in this level is going to be that, but I need to figure out a way to be able to illustrate that in a safe way earlier so that people aren't surprised by it when it happens later. Right. So, thinking that plus the springs. Maybe I... Uh, well, uh, I think maybe I'll just illustrate the springs in this part, and then I will illustrate that they shatter in the next part and then i will combine the two i think that i think that'll be a little bit better okay they could go with the rage mm -hmm. or, or age okay or the rageful Ooh. Two, three, i like the rage four, five yeah that's a good one that seems a little darker though i don't know I, I feel like they'd have to kind of change change up their uh, their feel a little bit. Oh, they could go with the raffinose, a colorless crystalline trisaccharide with little or no sweetness occurring in the sugar beet, cotton seed, and breaking down to fructose, glucose, and galactose, or hydrolysis. Oh yeah, I'm sure the average wrestling fan will definitely know what that is without having to look it up. They could go with the radnor. A town in southeast Pennsylvania near Philadelphia. I don't... I don't think that one... W well, I guess that could be Synecdoche for it, but... Uh... They can go with the raisins. <laughs> okay. Well... Okay. I want you to do this for me now, Andrew. I want you to work out how the hell they can work out a gimmick as the raisins how are they gonna go like full california raisins yes. on this full-on like yes. rubber suits yes and they will perform music and uh all that good stuff mm, okay what about the raiders the raiders I, I that one's i think copyright in sports already fine what about the railroad worms huh. which is apparently a thing Let's see what the definition... The larva of a fruit fly that burrows through apples forming tunnels that sometimes appear on the skin as faint depressions or darkened spots. Oh, that's what those are a called? A, a serious pest of apples in colder regions of North America. Hmm. I think I need to actually add a spring in here to make it so that they can collide. Uh... Oh, what about the rally? The rally? Yeah. That could work out. Oh, there's oh! Now they're lot. throwing them right at each other. What's going on here? There's I guess there's a lot under the word random. Like there's a lot for random, from random, random access memory, random coil, random error, random right. line, random mating, random numbers, random number, random rubble, random sampling, random variable, random walk, random walk theory, random access, random access memory with a hyphen this time. Ooh. Randomization, randomize, randomly, randomness. All right. Oh no, I know what it needs to be. Hmm. The Randy. Uh... They just come out like, eh, kind of like, yeah, mm -hmm. eyes wide, just kind of nodding too much. I, actually, I think yeah, I think you nailed it with that one. <laughs> or the rage. The rage. I still like the rage. The rage. They'd have to go a bit darker with the rage. But Not that really well. I've... Have you seen the video they put out for the revolt? I actually did not. I only read that article. Oh god, the video was so good. Yeah. It looked like a political upheaval. It had Shit. like footage from old. Uh, it he had actually... footage from like old uh like protests and shit. Oh it's actually really cool okay. Though. Fuck. Uh. That didn't work Fucking out. Fucking put in some power ups or something, damn it. No, no, I'm gonna put the power ups in later. Like the power ups are embellishment. This is this is mainly me trying to work out how to inter introduce the mechanic, 
without people just being like, well, fuck, that just came out of nowhere. Trying to, what? what's the one? It's uh, you have to introduce it through experience over time. So you can't just throw a mechanic on somebody. You have to like let them know ahead of time, like, yeah, this is going to be part of it. Okay, perfect. There we go. It's doing it. It's doing the thing. Yeah, there we go. See, so now they're they're crashing before they even get a chance to hit you. So you know already. Okay, so that did it. That did it. Now we whoop. You you've heard uh, the WWE released a lot of wrestlers. Yes, I year. saw I saw that first wave. Did, have they released the second one yet? Well. The, the proposed so, second one. So, there's a lot of discussion now whether there will ever be a second one. Okay. Because uh, from what Dave Meltzer of the, you know, where Dave Meltzer, you know, you could pretty much trust what he says, said that the discussion was there was going to be more, but then there was, no, we just did it all at once that's everybody we're going to release. Hmm. I theorized that they saw the backlash they got from releasing everybody and said, okay, we're not going to do that again. Right. Uh, because they got a lot of hate. They're going to make record profits this year. Yeah. Like somebody did the math and figured that even without the live show attendance money, they still have the possibility of making uh, one billion dollars in revenue this year for the first time in its history yikes and they had like this big pile of money i think it's either something like fifty thousand or five hundred thousand dollars or five hundred million dollars set aside Whoops. to prevent exactly this kind of thing right. you know for it in case of emergency situation and Firing these people would have saved them four million a month. Uh, oh, uh. four million a month. You've got five hundred million waiting in the wings. And somebody did some math and found out that if Vince McMahon didn't take his like, uh, whatever extra money he gets, right? He they would have been able to pay every one of those wrestlers for ten years. Oh. I mean, I'm not shocked that Vince takes a huge cut for doing for not really enough to deserve that. But, man, that is scummy. So, a weird thing happened. Mm -hmm. I want your opinion. You're one of those wrestlers, right? Sure. I'm going to describe a situation to you, and I want you to tell me how you respond when it's you in that situation. Okay. They were told, or there's reports that a lot of WWE superstars went to bat for one of the released wrestlers so that they would rehire said wrestler. Right. That wrestler being a lady named Sarah Logan. What makes that... So my question... You get fired right yeah by this company in the middle of a pandemic where there's no other work so you're not getting a new job no anytime soon definitely not you're not you're not going to work anywhere new anytime soon you are screwed basically right right then you find out a lot of your friends were like no 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 hire them back are you at all about to take that option like are you at all about to re-sign with the company that just fired you yeah that's a good point at the worst possible time i don't yeah like especially now when there are better options like in the past maybe it's like well wwe is about what you have if you want to make like make it big but now it's like there are way better companies like aew and New Japan, New Japan is Japan, yeah. Ring of Honor, PW Gorilla or Pro Wrestling Gorilla, um, Impact Wrestling at this point is not the greatest company on the planet as far as I'm like I don't they're not bad they're just not my cup of tea I'm never gonna like talk crap about their product 
Yeah, yeah that's the thing. Is like they, they still handle their women's division better than the AEW has. So yeah, that's one spot where AEW has really been dropping the ball. Because I feel yeah, like they not. they put way too many of their their uh, chips on Britt Baker going over. Yeah, and now that she's a heel, she's doing better, but she's a little more interesting. But it's like she's still kind of boring. Not great. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm not in love with Britt Baker as a heel. Um, and it's not her that's the problem. Like, I don't want to go so far as to say she's why it's not connecting for me. Right. It's not. Um, I I think she would do better, like we've said, with a manager. Yeah. And they've got one pre-made for the story. Like, make it Tony Schiavone. Yeah. I put... Have him be her manager, but, like, not as a heel manager, a face manager for a heel wrestler. And oh, he's just not, yeah. like, getting it. Like, he doesn't get that she's being rude and heelish to him. Yeah, I could see that. I think that's the thing, is that f- from listening to the podcast... It's become clear that like they they're giving their talent like a ton of creative freedom that they probably didn't really get in any of the other promotions or like gigs that they've gotten. But in some cases that's not a great thing. I feel like that's the thing is that Britt Baker it's like it's creative freedom can be good but it, like she needs a little bit of more structure like somebody to let her know like okay this is what we're going to do for her to like work within. And they're getting better. I will say that over the like ever since uh, Nyla won the title, mm-hmm. they have started pushing Sheeta big, and she really should have been pushed early, early on. In my oh yeah, opinion. she's she's like really over. So I feel like she could have been having much more uh, exposure early on. Yeah, and now that she's getting it, you know. It's great, and I'm glad that we finally have that. Yeah. You know what you should do is mm-hmm. put right here right where? in one of those uh, back a little bit to where the – yeah, right here. Oh, wait. You don't know what I'm looking at. No, yeah, that's the thing. We're the first two. We're the first uh, two. Uh, spike guys are throwing the balls, and they're bouncing off the pipe. Uh, Yeah. Because you've got that one guy flinging the spikes in such a position that you can't attack him, you should put a uh, turtle shell in one of the question mark blocks. Oh, so that, that would actually off. be that would be a better thing. I have just coins in here right now, so let me. Uh... I'd pop a turtle shell in there so they can either try to take that guy out or be smart, carry it with them a little ways, and take out some of them later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me. There we go. Uh, turtle shells are over here. Is that it? No, no. Uh, where are the shells? I think I just got to grab a Koopa then. Or you can go with a Shelmet. Shelmet. Isn't that what it's called when you put the Buzzy Beetle helm or shell on your hel- head? Oh. Like uh, that's true. Have you done that? I haven't. Or but... the spike helmet too. Yeah. Well, I think it would be under items, not enemies. Right. Well, I'm not. Um. That's the thing is I'm not seeing it in here. Well, slow down so we can look. Damn it. Well, that's that's all the items there. Yeah. So it's not in there. Uh... So I'm gonna pop that out and see if I. I... See it. How the hell did people do that all the time? Because I see it a lot. Hold on, let me... There we go. There it is. Can you do that, like, without an enemy inside? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Sorry, it might be a bit laggy for you, but I, uh... Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah, if, if you click uh, and I hold, see. it gives you more options. Whoops, get rid of him. Okay, yeah, so that's an option. My my thought on this is I want it to be visible that, like, you can see see them crashing the balls together so you can tell that they shatter. But then if but you want... I want, want... In the second block 
so that it's they have to go a little bit further before they can get it, and they're mm. more likely to have seen the balls crash by that point. Oh, okay. So just uh, switch uh, the position whoop. of the two blocks. Wait, how do I... Yes, remove this then. Uh, or actually, yeah, just switch them over. Okay, just whoop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so my thought is, like, you can go up here and try and take them out, but then, like... Uh, there is this as the incentive, or you can just continue onwards underneath and just move on to the next little bit of Galoomba. See, the smart person would put it on as a helmet. Then you can jump up into them and take them out instead of trying to jump on top of them. Right. So you can still take out both of them, still have your sort of power up, and have a weapon for later. Okay, so time. yeah, with that in mind, let me test that real quick. Yup, and then uh, ignore that. Then we go back up here. Whoop. Oh, it's that in there. Then whoop. Oh. oh, shoot. Uh, I don't. Let's see. That's not working out. How? Uh, you know. Instead, I think if I take it out here and put it on there, then it can actually be a helmet. Let me let me test that real quick. So if I'm do this, whoop, nope, nope, nope. Hold on, let me try that again. We do, and then we, yeah, okay. So yeah, it's a little bit of more of a challenge. So it's a, a bit more options. Okay, yeah. My idea is because I am creating like a full world, like the with the new update. Not only can you create like a full like set of levels, you can create an entire game like you can create eight worlds and make like an entire mario game out of your own levels um so right now i'm just working on world one and i'm working on it kind of like uh kind of like a screenplay i went over this at the beginning here but let me save this real quick and i'll show you my plans with this uh nope that's not it uh core spot load Okay, so yeah, I basically have nine levels planned that are going to work pretty much like the beats of a screenplay. So we're going to introduce some stuff in here. Things are going to get more dicey in here. This is when it's going to be clear that there is danger. And I'm going to tease uh, sort of a red herring for the, the midway boss. Then here it's going to be going to confront that boss. This is the actual boss level. But then with this... It, start, it will start out in, like, the more happy green grass kind of place. And it's like, yeah, everything's good. And then it's revealed that everything was totally destroyed while you were gone. This one, just total catharsis. You're, you're like, breaking up everything. You're wrecking shop. Then devastation, you actually see what your destruction has done. This is more like um, the ending. And it, it's kind of a downer. But then synthesis, it's going to be more of a narrative level, like an epilogue, where it shows that things have kind of come back to being okay for both you and the enemy, and you're kind of living together. That's my thought. I mean, should go well. Yeah, so, so far, I am working on the first level, <laughs> which has taken me... Right there. Taking me about two hours, so and I am still not quite finished. I think I have at least another hour of work to put into this, but um yeah, I'm gonna be streaming all of that. This whole section I just kinda threw down without a real plan yet. Um In fact, let me put like ground back here. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so let me go back to what I was working on over here. Yeah, they added a lot of new stuff in this version, in this uh, update, which is supposed to be the final update. Um, like, so they added all of the really big stuff, like a bunch of Super Mario Bros. 2 stuff, like the Phantos masks. Uh, you could actually, there's a Super Mario Bros. 2 mushroom now, which uh, here I can actually just show you what that does. Nope, that's not it. Uh, do I have to be in a specific theme to do that one? Uh, wait, wait. 
where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? I might have to unlock it or something. Hmm. Is there something I gotta do for it? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I don't know. But basically, the Super Mario Brothers 2 mushroom turns you into Super Mario Brothers 2 Mario. Um, and you can actually, like, pick up enemies and stuff. So the, the, the actual, like, controls completely change. I'm gonna probably do something with that in my next world that I do after this one. Not sure yet. Uh, what do I want to put into this? I will just put... Not a one-up. Since they are kind of useless in this. Uh, Coins. Just some coins. And multi-grab. I know how you only had like Super Mario Maker 2 on a whoops on a uh Gamefly rental, right? right? Yeah. That's what, correct. What did you think of it? Not my thing. Okay. I mean it's cool. It's fun to play with. Not my thing. Okay, I mean, most people I see, a lot of people uh, kind of have the wrong perception that if you aren't making levels, you're not getting the most out of it. But in reality, a lot of the biggest fans of this game pretty much just play user-created levels uh, yeah. and don't even touch the, like, creation side of it. That is There's what... There's a YouTuber I watch that does a lot of them, and it's fun to watch. It looks cool. It's not for me. Fair enough. Which YouTuber? The uh, one I showed you a couple months ago, Blue Television Games. Mm, I it sounds familiar. I don't think I remember. He's just a very like wholesome channel that plays mostly this. There's a fan version of this that does a lot more and allows you to do a lot more, but it's in closed beta. Mm, is that he does like a PC thing? I think so. Yeah, it's called. Uh, Mario Multiverse. Mmm. Because, yeah, I mean, so, they're, the ROM hacks have been a thing for a long time, but they're just not very user-friendly if you don't know how to code. Well, this isn't so much a ROM hack as it is just essentially this, but with more options. Right. Like, when Mario Maker 1 was out, okay. it had uh, all the same stuff, but more so. Right. Um, and it allows you to, you know, put text in, for instance, or allows you to... That's helpful. That I, w I was just thinking there's a part I'm going to have to have, like, at least a word later, and I'm trying to work out if I want to just do the, the coin words like everybody does, or Right. Something. This allows you to put NPCs in. NPCs? Put it, okay. Yeah. That you can talk to, or little signs. Or you know how in Super Mario World they have those little blocks with a red light in it that looks like a traffic light uh and you jump into them and it gives you just a little blurb about what's going on oh yeah that i was actually thinking about how that would be perfect for what i want to do with this uh, they have that. oh you know what i think let me actually make these mushrooms taller hold on let me go through this part to see what the arc is like and then i'm gonna probably put another helmet i, I think that's actually gonna be the way to make this section more, like, palatable. Okay, so the arc is that. So I want the mushroom to be up here so that Mario can, like, jump straight into the hat. Uh, and then I need another helmet. Uh, it, it, uh, yep. Oh. Going back to why I don't think uh, there are going to be more, uh -huh. but that there were going to be more releases, and I think they're lying when they say, oh, no, that was all of them, yeah. No, 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 no. Remove. Take no one off. from SmackDown was released. Ah. Uh, yep. It was all Raw and NXT stars. Hmm, okay. And that's why I theorized. 
they were going down the roster one show at a time. Right. And they got through NXT that night, and they saw all the fucking backlash they were getting and how fucking evil it was from everybody's point of view. And they thought, well, shit, we better stop. Right. I mean, I don't know what they were expecting. They were hoping nobody would notice. That's not... I mean... I understand them tr- hoping for that, but that's not what was going to happen. Yeah, oh yeah, they, this part this part is fans. this part is way m- more doable now. Whoa, what what the fuck <laughs> happened back there? Who's wow. that? The balls you're reflecting the balls back at them and killing them. Shit. Oh, that's not what I want. That is definitely not Well, okay, oh, you, you, you were so close. It, it was the spike. Bo- okay, the spike's getting hit by them. That's fine. Uh, it's the Galumbas getting killed in this section. Oh god damn it! I thought the Galumbas would be, could would just like walk back and forth. Now nah, these guys, these are suiciding guys. That's not good. Shit. Uh, what was my what's my plan for this then? I guess. I still want there to be like danger. Uh, you can minimize the amount of Galumbas that die at a time by putting blocks up but that would also impede your jumping that's the thing yeah i want it to be like a jumping over kind of leapfrog thing do you have options for how enemies behave oh good question uh let me see let me see what happens when i double click on these guys uh the do these guys hang out uh let's scoop mario over here do they not... Do you want to make it a jump-specific problem? Ah, okay. These little guys will stay on the thing. So there's an alternate Galumba that would be perfect for that. So let me just make them the bottom of each of these stacks. And well, that will be Well, you want to also make sure that they stay stacked. Because, like, maybe regular Galumbas walk off of them. Oh, that's a good point. I don't think it's, it's that complex, but, uh, yeah, let me... Let me double check that. I mean, if they're walking off the cliff. Uh, no, they stay on the stack. So that's good, yeah. Good. Yeah, so that that is a solution. It's gonna look a little weird, but if I make it consistent across the entire level, it will not be uh, the worst thing. Okay, okay. So that I think will make the areas work. A little better. Oh, did you see the fucking protest sign out of Tennessee today? Oh, God, I've been seeing so many stupid protest signs. What was this one? Sacrifice the weak, reopen Tennessee. That's disgusting. Yeah. I am really disgusted by all of these protests, because it's all petty stuff. Like, oh, here's the thing. AstroTurf. Yeah. None of it's legitimate. <sighs> yeah, it's of course all... not. First of all, first of all, anybody watching... Those protests are a lot smaller than you're being led to believe. Oh, they're very tiny. Uh, And there's not as big a movement behind it as you're being led to believe. In fact, not only do a majority of the country want the country to stay closed during the pandemic, a majority of even Republicans want it closed. Yeah, like... like at least two thirds of the country still want it to stay closed yeah, until it's safe. Yeah, something like sixty-six percent of the country, but fifty-four percent of even Republicans want it closed. Yeah, because during the pandemic, I mean, the Republicans are generally at higher risk because a good portion of the Republican Party is older Americans who are at more risk than younger Americans. Right. So that's one thing. Whoops. But. It's also all organized by, like, either just one guy, if I'm not mistaken, or a very small handful of people. Well, it's also, yeah, there's, like, some other... Whoa! Okay, I guess you can actually bump the spikes, the spike with the helmet. I noticed the the spike balls, but, like, I mean, like, the actual guys, if you get up under them, you can bump them up. (laughs) That's That's, cool! That's fun. I'm used to watching enemies get destroyed by that, but... I guess okay. they're and then, what? just uh, enough. And then, yeah. All right. I, I do love watching the spike balls just destroy the assholes that threw them. But 
Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Somebody no, I, I, I love how this, this level's turning out. This is going very good. Yeah. So there's a reporter I follow that I trust to a point where if there's a big news story that seems a little fishy or you're like, is this for real? I always check to see if she's commented on it. Um, her name is Brooke Binkowski. Highly recommend her for everybody. Um, she's very good. Like she used to work for Snopes until they started working with Facebook and didn't uh, change things. Like, like they were basically working with Snopes in such a way that they weren't doing what they or they were working with Facebook in such a way they weren't doing what they had set out to do as Snopes. Right. So she left, and uh, she's been fighting, or making these complaints about Facebook since before most people knew how bad Facebook had become. Right. And so I would put a ball hook and chuck right there. Ball hook and... Well, okay, the thing here is that the the main theme, the main enemy of this entire world is going to be these Mecha Koopas. So this is my tease for like, there's something a little weird. Is it's gonna start to get kind of mechanized in this level what do the different and that level? Colored Mecha Koopas do? Uh, okay, so regular Mecha Koopa works just like they do at the end of Super Mario Bros. Uh, Super Mario World. So right. they're just running around. You bop them. You can pick them up. Uh, the red ones. Let's see. The red ones. Uh, they shoot homing missiles. Let's see. Yeah, see, they shoot a homing missile. Okay. Which you can use to get them. And then the blue one, which is definitely going to make a ton of appearances in this one, is... Uh, they fire a big-ass laser. <laughs> hold on. My laser. Oh, uh. Hold on. Watch out. I want to get, like, a thing. It's that huge thing. So they are going to make a huge thing. And I can guarantee somebody is making uh, a Lechman stage from uh, Mega Man with those guys. Because that's definitely the beams that like to shoot across the stage. So yeah, they are one of the things in this final update that I'm going to be... That uh, I definitely want to theme this first world around. So it's going to be the, the Mecha Koopa invasion. And... That's a little basic, and actually, Coco pointed out that like that can be kind of misconstrued as an anti-immigration thing. So I'm making it more of a, more of a, a, a kind of reversal in the end, where it's at. It's like, oh shit, the Mecha Koopas were literally just they didn't have anywhere to go, and eventually they will learn to coexist by the end of the world. So, but um, going back to the protests and whatnot yep uh brooke started another website mm -hmm. to not compete with snopes but to just do what snopes like they be original news. snopes yeah they check news and determine whether it's true or false whether it's real news or fake news and they it's basically a lot like snopes used to be before they sold out which is scary for a website that whose job is to find fucking fake news and expose it. Yeah, it's unfortunate that you can't trust them anymore. They used to be one of the two places you could go and be able to trust their ruling. I mean, you can still mostly trust them. It's just, you know, not what it used to be. Uh, especially in regards to Facebook. And, like, they've come out since and said, oh, yeah, we screwed up. And, like, yeah, you did, and you're not doing much to fix it. But anyway, I'm not going to shit talk Snopes. Yeah. They still do, like, a 80% decent job. Sure. But I go with Brooke's uh, website instead, truthorfiction.com. And so, turns out, like, all these protests, uh, she's done a lot of, like, research on this. A oh. lot of these protests are actually... Um, just one guy had organized most of these. They are what you've heard of the phrase grassroots movements. Yes. This is an astroturfed movement. It's. Oh fake. yeah. Okay. I, uh, yeah, right. I saw the John Oliver bit explaining astroturf. Yeah. It's a fake grassroots movement set up by like one guy in Florida for the most part. Mm, of course. And 
Yeah, that's why it's such a small movement. And of course, you'll be shocked to find out that groups like Patriot Prayer and uh, Proud Boys are connected. Oh, of course. I'm, I'm sure you're shocked. I'm sure you're shocked. Yeah, I was definitely. I didn't see that one coming. Uh, uh, I, I don't know how I, like, I feel about that. Am I like way huger than I was before? Well, yeah, you've got a cape. Well, it's like not it. It doesn't look like a standard like cape size though. It looks like even larger. Did I accidentally do one of the like weird, like huge ones? Let me check. No, I mean you're only a little bit bigger than your normal sprite or the m mini sprite. Whoops. No, get out of here. I don't know if I feel like Kamala Harris is a good pick for Biden's VP. Oh no, is that who he picked? No, but there, she's leading in the polls, or leading in the odds of vice president. Uh, uh, I do not like her. I, I just don't. Her, uh, she's. I don't trust anybody that brags about being the biggest cop in a room full of cops. Yeah, that's my that's thing. Not, is I don't. And I, that's not this whole like people are saying. Oh, that's bullshit. She never did that. I saw the fucking video where she said, "I am the biggest cop in this room full of cops." She, when she was attorney general in California, she locked up trans people in the wrong prisons. When she was, uh, she bragged about locking people up when she was attorney. Like, she is literally, when people say that whole Kamala Harris is a cop thing was made up to make her look. No, this is her bragging about being a cop. She is a cop. Yeah, she's a cop, and she is definitely an attorney general that cops really like because she has okay. a cop mindset about it. And I just, I, I, I hate that. I, I'm just frustrated. And she bragged about me. Like, her mouth said it, not ours. We are quoting hers. That means we know more about what she says than the people defending her saying she's not a cop. Yeah. Which I, I equate so much as stuff like that, like apologists like that, like looking at like uh, Elon Musk with this whole pandemic uh, and the respirators thing. I, I It shocks oh, me thought, how quick people are to defend him because it's like he the things he was bringing were BiPAP machines. And some people were like, they're CPAP machines, which are ineffective. And they were all everybody. All of his apologists were like, uh, they're BiPAP machines, so you're wrong. And it's like, okay, they are still they're the still incorrect thing. Yeah. They're yeah, not like, what we need, so it doesn't matter whether they are actually CPAP or BiPAP machines. They are wrong either way, and he's wasting time and resources when he could just make actual fucking respirators with his money by giving it to the people who make respirators. What got me about the thing was, as soon as the pandemic started people predicted he was going to do that oh of course because that's all that's all like, he does he wants to be a superhero he wants to be tony stark yeah when like, tony stark was directly based on him so well kind of like not the original tony stark the but, the, the like, movie tony stanley stark created, yeah when stanley created tony stark he said i created a character that i knew that the you know hippie crowd would hate because he was a guy who literally made all of his money off of weapons and was the antithesis of everything they liked. I was going to make him an asshole, and then I was going to make them love him by the end of the you know, run. And he did. Like, that's exactly what he did. And so he's meant to be an unlikable dick, and then this guy's like, ah, I want to be like him. That it's the, a lot about Elon Musk. Yeah, it's the same thing. I know you're not as much into anime, but the fact that he has like an Edward Ulrich, uh, or yeah, Edward Ulrich, uh, icon from Full Metal Alchemist, and he doesn't get the irony in that with the way that he acts is pretty telling. Like it's the it's pretty much like having a f fucking Rick Sanchez icon. Yeah. Which I'm shocked he didn't do that. That that seems totally like he's, on brand for uh, him. No, no, no. He he's been on Rick and Morty as himself. Oh, has he? I I, I watched the first two seasons and then I kind of dropped off after the whole Szechuan sauce debacle. See, I don't blame the fans for how the show goes, like or the show for how the fans act. Dan Harmon has 
vocal like both of them have vocally like disavowed those fans which good um, good good on them they absolutely should yeah and they've gone and hired like more women to work on the show specifically because a it was a sausage fest of a room but b because they knew it would anger those fans oh absolutely <laughs> and so uh they've got oh who was it i was just talking about i think i may be wrong i may be wrong on this so do not quote me but okay. i believe you are being recorded just and remember that <laughs> I need to look up. I know who I'm thinking of. I may have the show wrong. Mm, okay. So let me make triple sure. Okay, okay. Yes. Siobhan Thompson from College Humor yeah. writes on Rick and Morty. Oh, she does now? Yeah. Oh, that's At least awesome. That's what her Twitter profile says. Writer on Rick and Morty, player on Dimension Twenty. I'm I'm very happy for her then. That's uh that's a good spot to go to after the unfortunate things that happened to college humor. Yeah. 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 But Dorkley's back, so. Oh, well. That's kinda. something. Uh, kind of back. Like, they're doing like Cracked did recently, where they just host that cartoon that some Canadian company made. Mm. So it's very similar to Dorkley's original animated content. Like, you would not know the difference. If it weren't for the fact that somebody comes in at the end and says, thank you so much to Dorkly for hosting our video. We are da-da-da. Check out our channel if you like that. And Dorkly's back. Like, that's what they say specifically each time is Dorkly's back, implying that this is all Dorkly is going to be now. Mm. But but it's essentially the same thing you're used to seeing, but just the animation so no tony no you know any of that so i yeah i wasn't as uh well versed in dorkly's stuff but i loved dorkly i loved tony tony's very fun okay i didn't i didn't understand the puppet i didn't like the puppet as much but i did love dorkly um i think what i'm gonna do here yeah, I'm going to have some mushrooms, and I'm going to make the stalks, like, lead down. And then on the lower level, I'm going to put these, like, these same stalks, like... For, I'm just going to make the mushroom crazy tall so you can never see the top, and then make it so that they're just leading up into the sky. Oh, shit. Every day the coronavirus just sounds worse and worse. Yeah. Like, they don't know now if getting it and getting over it gives you an immunity like with other sicknesses like chicken pox yeah uh amos here's the headline from the washington post so i can only give you the headline i can't read it because oh, let me check let me double check uh yeah no they put their shit behind a paywall so you have to subscribe yeah even if you turn off like ad blocker it's always behind a paywall so i can only only give you the headline and I don't like doing that because I'm one of those that knows that sometimes articles use a sensational sounding headline, but the article is not as sensational. Right. But here's a mysterious blood clotting complication is killing coronavirus patients. Oh, yeah. Once there was a... Uh, uh... Oh, who was it? There was an actor recently who he had to get uh, one of his legs amputated because the blood clots were threatening his life. Jesus Christ. So, stay the fuck home, everybody. God yeah. damn it. For fuck's sake, y'all act like, oh, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to go places. I just want to stay home. And now that you have to, you're like, but, but parties. Stop. You're killing people. Yeah. Like, that's why, okay, the CDC right now... And I've gone over this on Twitter, but the CDC right now, their recommendation is if you go outside, wear a mask. The mask is not to protect you. It never has been because your eyes and your ears are still exposed. They are still orifices where the disease can get in. It is to yes. keep you from getting anyone else sick if you are already infected because there's a two-week gap where you don't start showing symptoms if you show symptoms at all. So, 
yeah, wear a mask. It's not for you. It's to protect everybody else. If you're not wearing a mask, if you're wearing mask wrong, like all the idiots I see at Walmart who have it under their nose, so they're just spraying snot onto their mask, yeah. you are killing people. Don't. Stop. Put the mask on. Stay home all, or wear a mask when you go out. For fuck's I'm sake. Going to, I am going to correct you on a little bit. Okay. You are not entirely wrong. Okay? Most of what you said is true. Okay. First of all, you are 100% right. Correctly wear your masks. Yes. If you're wearing the kind with uh, two little loops that go around, the only part of the mask you should touch are the two loops that go around your ears. Or, if you're like me, I have a very nice neoprene mask with replaceable filters inside Ooh. that I use when I work. Uh, I've had it for over a year now. It's from RZ Masks. I highly recommend it. Iggy, you've seen it. It's my Jimmy Havoc looking black and white one with the black spikes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it has replaceable filters that I just switch out, you know, once a month with the virus going on. That's pretty, pretty useful. Shopping. Yeah, uh, I wear gloves. And here's a thing. If you and I are in a room... Mm-hmm. And we're less than, you know, we can't distance or whatever. And you definitely have corona. Neither of us wear masks. My uh, odds of catching it are 100%. Yeah. Right? You put on a mask. My rate or my likelihood of catching it does drop significantly. It's, it's, yes. It's but not. not to zero. Exactly. But if I'm wearing the mask and you are not, my rate still drops significantly not to zero however if both of us wear a mask regardless of whether or not i've got it you do my chances of contracting it drop even more to something like 1.8 percent chance yeah because so it, it half does... of half of your orifice is your mouth and your nose are covered then and yes. the, there's and less of the contagions getting orifice. out and due to it being a respiratory disease, is less likely to get to the parts that it wants to fuck up through the eyes and ears. Not 0% chance. So I also throw on headphones and a pair of sunglasses mm. just for that extra little bit. Oh, are it wraparound sunglasses? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like the kind that you get after ocular surgery. <laughs> Right. I mean, technically, yeah, like, full, little... full like, splash-style safety goggles would be the, the ideal, but... Well, I mean, nurses are getting, like, just plastic sh sheets and wrapping them in front of their faces as well. That's... Ugh, that just makes... Uh, I mean, that technically with, will protect mask, you. Well, with the mask, with glasses, and just, like, a plastic sheet in front of the face, because it's better than nothing. It, and that's uh... all they've fucking got. It's better than nothing, but it's also dangerous from the whole, like, asphyxiation side. No, 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 no. You still have your, like, cloth mask over your face mm -hmm. and a pair of glasses. Then you just take, like, a sheet of, like, flexible plastic, like, uh, overhead projector paper. And you poke a hole on each side, put a little elastic band through it, and you wear it like an old Halloween mask. Oh, like the, the, like the Westworld style face mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, like my makeshift. One. Okay. Like that black one I have with the breathing slits. Like that. Okay. But, um, they're using like whatever sheet, sturdy plastic sheets they can get. So like uh, notebook dividers, um, et cetera, et cetera, to just make a little shield for their face. Or like, uh, yeah, like you were saying, the Westworld mask or uh, anything they can get that, you know, you can go to. Uh, Hardware store, pay $15, get a little face shield. Yeah. You know, they're right. easily available. Uh, that's a step farther than I'm thinking most Americans are willing to go. I don't know if until the CDC says, yeah, you should be doing that too. I'm right. sure I should be, but I'm not gonna until the CDC, because I'm not trusting Rando I mean, I have them. online. Yeah, I've got yeah, I've got, you know, two of those masks already. One that's black, that is the Westworld. Uh, so you mentioned Westworld. Yeah. They got their masks from a specific uh, provider, like maker. I 
watched Adam Savage. Yeah, I saw lot. that video too. So he loved that mask. He went and got one. And he shared where to get it. I then went and got one at the same time, but I went with a black mask, full face, and it's got, uh, it looks like Cell's mouth before he's perfect Cell. Oh, yeah. It's got a uh, vent in the front. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I have pictures of it on my Instagram where I'm building stuff. Oh, I'm not signed into it. Okay, hold on. Uh, I'll send it to you. But um, yeah, I'll yeah. send it to you, and you can pull it up on the stream if anybody cares to see it. Um, I don't think I have a browser uh, input on it right now. Oh, God, the frame rate is dropping so hard. Ugh. I said if anybody cared. No one cares. We're the only ones watching. It, fair enough. I mean, if you just uh, if you see. drop the link into the chat... It will show up on screen, so they can, like, type out the link from that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I've got that. If the CDC says you should be wearing these, I'll put it on. Like, of course I will. I'm not going to put it on right now. Not because I don't think it's important to be safe, but because I'm not just going to wrap myself in bubble wrap if it's not going to help. If it'll help, then I'll wear it. Until yeah. I know it does, I'm not going to you know, put on something that isn't proven effective. Exactly. And like, if they're saying even as simple a mask as a scarf is good enough, put on the fucking scarf. I've, I'm lucky I've got a really nice high-end mask. I have a thing for masks. I've got a lot of masks. Put something over your face and nose. Like, and if you're wearing a mask, oh, like actual medical mask, only touch the straps. Do not touch the mouth covering. Cover your nose and mouth and make sure you're wearing it the right way out. Yes. That's another problem. So a many lot of people, people are I wearing see. them inside out. Yeah. Make sure that the filter is inside there, the mask. There was some nonsense that was going around that was like, if you wear it inside out, then it protects you. Like, that's not how no, that works, guys. It because, doesn't It doesn't stop it because your eyes. Your eyes. Well, it's not even just the eyes. Think about it this way. If you wear it inside out, you don't necessarily know for sure whether or not you've got the disease. And if you're wearing that mask inside out, you may have it and you're just spreading it directly back into your lungs by wearing the mask the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. So make sure you wear your mask correctly. Make sure you are being safe. Um, I guess I don't actually have any pictures of me and my mask working. Hmm. I'm, I'm shocked. I need I'll to make send this... you a picture later. Yeah, totally. I need to make this sub area a little longer because right now it's just a shortcut across the entire stage. It's this Darth Vader looking. Like if Darth Vader and Daft Punk had a kid together, mm. the, the mask that kid would wear is one of my work masks. Uh, you know what? So, Actually, I think I'm going to. Sorry, I'm just yeah. mumbling to myself. I work with it whenever I have to do any brazing or anything that requires very hot um bright things like light right because what it does is it's basically sunglass lens material right but it's a very light large sheet of it wrapped around my head and i love it it's a wonderful mask i highly recommend it i also recommend like i said the RZ masks for filtration uh, specifically because they are I had one before all this but it is the perfect mask for the average person right now because it's got removable replaceable filters and as long as you're careful about you know replacing those you can you know wear a pair of gloves while you replace the filter I don't know how long you should keep the filters in. That's a good question. Or... I would say for safety's sake, and if you can afford it, buy a bunch of the filters with the mask 
and replace it every time you go, like every day. Yeah. You know, sure. I wouldn't go so far as to say every time you go out. Simply because they, it is better than a scarf, and they're saying to wash these scarves and to wash these other things every day, right? Right. Uh, they're saying like, and here's the thing: if you're wearing gloves, there's a right and wrong way to wear your gloves. Okay. Mm-hmm. While dr- when you are at home and you walk out to your car, leave the gloves off. When you get to the store that you're going to turn off the car put on your gloves get out shut the door right preferably you'll have your keys in your purse or your pocket before you put your gloves on because you are looking at cross contamination when you get back to the car after shopping you've got your stuff in the basket if you've got an automatic door on the back of your car, perfect. Put your stuff in, then take the gloves off, then get in the car. Do not open the door with cross-contaminated gloves now. Wait till you get home. Uh, if you're worried about the bags still having something on them, rub them with Lysol, take them in. I use reusable bags. I am now washing my cloth ones. Ooh, actually that, yeah, use. we should be doing that. That's a good point. Yeah. Wash your reusable bags. And if they're not washable, like they're plastic or whatever, spray them down with some bleach water. Let them dry on their own. To be clear though, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. I was actually just reading an article where there have been a lot of like poisoning hospitalizations and stuff because yes. people don't understand how to work with bleach without a, a hot boxing their kitchen House. in a, in a not fun way where they end up. Yeah. Passing out from the fumes and keep that and stuff do... away from kids to a ton of kids are swallowing harsh chemicals because parents don't know how to keep them away. Cause they never use the harsh chemicals regularly. Be safe around you're... your kids. If you're bleaching out a plastic bag like that, like an insulated bag or whatever, let it air dry. Don't wipe it out, but try and, like, keep the bags open somehow while they dry. Mm, yeah. Otherwise, mold can grow in a moist environment, even if it's a bleachy, moist environment, because eventually the bleach will evaporate out at some point, or it'll just be overpowered by all the bacteria. Just find a way to like prop them open if you can and let them air dry that way. Yeah. Um, but if you're going out, put the gloves on when you are out of your car, unless you have the coronavirus and you know, you have it then. Yeah. If you can stay home, stay home and get deliveries. If you can, if you cannot, be as safe as you can be yeah definitely Um, like i as much as i i'm berating people for being kind of dumb about all this i i do not want anyone to get hurt the best case scenario everybody stays safe and we we flatten that curve we flatten that curve as much as we can but at, at this point it's hard to tell if we're gonna be able to do it to a significant enough way we're not uh leader you know we've botched it too much already yeah. uh there's going to be a lot of a lot of people are going to be dead um we've yeah. already fucked up uh that said that doesn't mean we can't mitigate the damage to be done i you should all still be as safe as possible don't do stupid shit you know what's safe you use a little common sense uh, for the things like safety and PPE that we're supposed to be using. Look up what the CDC has to say. Yes, absolutely. They they are trust trust the CDC, not a politician or yeah or any rando. Honestly, even us. Like you should be double checking that we yeah. actually are t- are saying the truth. Like don't just assume that we are telling the truth. We could still be wrong. Neither of us are doctors or disease experts. We just know what we do and we could be wrong. So please do your own research. 
double check, make sure that it is actually the safest thing because it, even if you don't think that you're going to die from it, this is not a disease you want to get and it's not a disease you want to give to anyone else. Yeah, no. And to say, well, I'm young and healthy, I'll be fine. Uh, bullshit, a 39-year-old Mexican wrestler died last week from it. It's also, a, a thing to point out is that while uh, people under the age of 50 are not the ones dying the most, they are the ones who are getting hospitalized the most for this. So even if you aren't, even if you aren't going to die from it, you still might have to go to the hospital and be put on a respirator to survive. So don't risk it. It's not, there's nothing out there worth risking your life for right now. There's nothing out there, like at all people just stay home like Pat Oswalt had the best goddamn comment on this mm -hmm. he won the pandemic no other joke need be written on the pandemic because Pat Oswalt wrote the best one okay and Frank hid in a closet or an attic for two years without moving or making a sound we've been inside for a month and we're already with Netflix, video games, and deliveries like Postmates, and we're already protesting in the streets. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So, yes, if Anne Frank can do it for two goddamn years, you can suck it up with modern... Because keep in mind, it's even worse when you think of how Anne Frank had to go through it. They could not move. They could not breathe loudly. They could not breathe through their mouths because it was too loud. They could not make too much sound while they were there because if they did at any point, they would have given away not only themselves, but their whole family, any family hiding with them, and they would have died. And you can't handle a couple of days indoors just chilling with the fucking PlayStation. Come on, people. And it, you notice that the people protesting are not like people our age. It's not, you know, the millennials on fucking Fox News complaining. Did you see that video of the old guy, like, crying because he couldn't get fucking, uh, I can't even go and do, paint my house, or I can't even go and do, uh, grass seed and fertilizer. Come on. Come on. But yeah, you can, first yeah. of all. No one's yeah. saying you can't do either of those. Second of all, Stay home. Order it online. Fuck. And then it immediately cuts to a lady sitting in her car complaining, holding up a protest sign, saying, we just want to get out and go to restaurants, get our hair done. And she, like, shows off her gray roots under her clearly fake red hair. And yeah. I'm like, what are you worried about? Somebody going to find out you got great roots? You just told the whole fucking nation, sweetheart, stay home. Yeah. I just don't. Like, it's such petty stuff that we don't need know, that bad. I like. But you know, Iggy, we're the, we're the entitled generation. Of course. It's always us who are entitled, even though we ask for the least and we put up with the most. We just want decent pay and health care. We're so fucking entitled to think we deserve... But, Basics. but Andrew, don't you know? You can just get a part-time job doing dishes and pay your way through college. That's how it yeah, works, right? Person. It's not a full-time, middle-class income to pay for a single semester of college. As somebody who washed dishes at a college, they can go fuck themselves. Like, I washed dishes for SCAD when we first moved to Savannah. And I... Walked, I've only quit one job in my life without ever having a plan of what I was going to do next. That was... No, that's not true. I did it with another one, but it was a MLM job. Oh, yeah. Um, fuck that shit. So that doesn't really count. But I quit this job after one week of washing dishes. I have worked 10-hour shifts in factories hefting you know multi-hundred pound items up onto hooks for painting i have worked in uh window factories 
hauling windows around, lifting windows up off an assembly line. And you may think a window doesn't sound like that big a deal. Oh, no. Those Anybody... Those are heavy. Yeah, it's They're like... They're extremely heavy. Being a, someone who moves glass or being someone who moves, like, furniture, it's like, what? It's just wood. It's just glass. It's like, no, these things are real heavy, especially when you're doing it over and over again, busting your back. Yeah, and if you've never had to lift a window that was bigger than you in both height and width you don't realize a those things are not solid they are especially if they're vinyl windows if they're vinyl surround they are very wobbly yeah very very glass and will shatter if you are not careful and very heavy they are which, what is it an amorphous solid yes so um they are an amorphous solid, and there's a lot of argument over that, but they are. And so, over a long enough period of time. And you hear the thing about windows being wider at the base than they are at the top. Mm -hmm. That is for very rudimentary glass and very old buildings. Yeah, stuff Most... that didn't have a proper mold. And so, those windows have almost all been replaced by now the kind of windows where that is an actual thing more or less do not exist anymore. And if they do, they belong in a museum for being able to withstand that long a period of time because they should have broken under their own, like they shouldn't even fill the frame by now if they still existed. So glass today, still an amorphous solid, not to the extent that we think of when we think of them making that knife blade shape that if you look at it from the side it's the same as right the wedge they, the, yeah they don't make that anymore because we have better formulated glass today but it was true of old styles of glass so um working with glass i've done hard work i don't so i want that to be understood when i say I walked away from this job after a week because it was one of the worst jobs I've ever had. And I, I say that as somebody who has been a cashier at Family Dollar. I have delivered newspapers. I have delivered medicine to nursing homes. I have, you name a shitty job, I've prob literally probably done it. I've cleaned, when I worked for Family Dollar, a customer went in our bathroom and literally shit on the walls. Like, smeared their shit on the walls. I had to clean that up. Like, I had to be the one that cleaned that up. I am not kidding when I say I have had the worst jobs you can have ever. Okay? So, when I say that dishwashing was the worst, it was the worst. And I've worked in a restaurant before. I worked for Arby's for a year and a half where I did everything short of managing. I worked the drive through hated that. Only did it once because I had bad hearing. So I couldn't hear what they were saying at the microphone. Right, uh, right. I've been a cashier at Arby's. I washed dishes. I cleaned the slicer. I made the food. I cooked your food. I've done all of it except for, like, running the schedule. So when I say washing dishes in a professional kitchen is still the worst job I've ever had, I fucking mean it. It is the worst job I've ever had. And it was also one of the least paid jobs I ever had. Um, the best pay to work quality I've ever had was probably delivering the medicine for nursing homes. Because, I mean, you just mostly sit in a car all night long. Shit. And um, <laughs> that's it. Like, like, that's the job. You sit in a car all night and then fill out some paperwork. That's yeah, that's yeah. pretty much the job my mom has now. She uh she drives people for the railroad, so pretty much mm -hmm. just sitting in a truck 12 hours overnight and if somebody needs to get out there to do some maintenance on the railroad, she'll have to drive. Sometimes she won't drive at all. Sometimes she'll drive the entire 12 hours and have to hand them off to somebody else. So, yeah. so what I did was I would go to a pharmacy or the pharmacy which you imagine, like, CVS or, like, some little mom-and-pop place, right? Like, 
maybe a front room and a back room because when I read the job description, that's what it more or less described. Sure. Was a family owned pharmacy delivering medicine to nursing homes. And I was like, I could do that. And I, or delivering medicine for a pharmacy. It never mentioned the nursing homes or the care homes or like a lot of places. So you just kind of imagine this little, uh, you know, front room, back room kind of pharmacy, like, uh, what you'd see in like an old general store or something. And you just sit around in the back waiting for a delivery to be needed. Right. No, not at all what it's like. What I did was I would go in at, you know, I started off as a part-timer. So what I originally did was just sat around waiting for a phone call from my boss. And then I would go to the office, take whatever the delivery was, pick it up, drive it to wherever it was going. And then one night a week I would cover for one of the full-time drivers because their route was so long that if they worked five nights a week, they would get over 40 hours. Oh, yeah, that old racket. Right. I mean, no, they were. I eventually got one of those routes, and I'm glad I got the extra night a week off. Okay. Um, it, it's it's a lot of work. Oh, what is so world? Oh, world my... butt. Yeah, I should actually draw out my world to finish this off. I have finished the level at this point, but I'll let you finish your story while I I build the actual world. Cool. So what I did was um, I moved up to full time when. Our boss got fired for inappropriate behavior, and one of the drivers got promoted. So I took over his route, which saw me drive from Kernersville, North Carolina, into Winston, into Boone. And like, pretty much, if you look at North Carolina, mm -hmm. and you look at the mountain range of Appalachians, and cut that in half, I had the north half of that and Virginia. So I would drive from central North Car North Carolina out to the mountains, up into Virginia, but the route to Virginia was such that you didn't go North Carolina, Virginia. You went North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia. Mm -hmm. you, I went through three states a day delivering medicine. And then once a month, uh, there was this route that it was so long and so far away the stops they only did it one day a month oh yeah whereas every other route was every day so that's how crazy this route is uh they gave it to me when i was a part-timer my first time and i nailed it like i don't know what the other drivers were doing but i get a phone call from my boss before I get to my first stop, he called me when he got to the office. Because keep in mind, you start that once a month route at 3 a.m. Okay? Okay. You you show up at the office at 3 a.m. And there's the main reason for that is you have to do it in the middle of the night. Because it's so long that by the time you get done, you're getting back just before they have to start for the night around six o'clock in the evening. So you're starting at 3 a.m. finishing around six. Okay. Mm -hmm. They've had, they've had guys show up as vans were getting loaded for the day. Cause they provide you a vehicle. Sure. So you're not, you're not using your own car. So they've had guys show up just in time for the person who's supposed to be driving that for the night to fill their vehicle to load it up. So it's that kind of crazy length. Sure. So I'm doing it the first time my boss shows up. And he's like, Hey, about how far are you from your first stop? I'm like, oh, GPS says about 10 minutes. He said, what? I said, is that bad? He goes, no, that's good. <laughs> he was quite excited by that. So um, I told him, there. yeah. Uh, so apparently, keep in mind, this is a route that went from 3 a.m. to 6 p.m. Three stops. Just three stops. Wow. That's how big it is. 
uh, or how long it is. If you look at a map of North Carolina, you'll notice that the western side of it comes to a very fine point. That right. point is where all those three stops are. And we're talking from central North Carolina to there. It is, without hyperbole, about the same distance as driving from Charlotte, North Carolina to Savannah, Georgia. Oh. And you never leave the state. Like, that's how wide North Carolina is. So, I did that route, and I was back six hours faster than anyone else who had ever done the route. And no one can figure out how I did it. I don't know how I did it. They don't know how I did it. Uh, they had me take a guy with me the next time. And I told him, be there at 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Be at the office at 2 o'clock. Because the first van that comes in, we're taking and we're going. And that's what we did. We As soon as the first van got there, about it was already there, actually. We just grabbed that van, took it out. Nailed it, got back by about 1 or 2 o'clock because he had to stop and use the restroom. So we nail it, get back. In fact, we probably did it faster because at the first stop, there's two locations you have to go to. Right. And he did one while I did the other. I dropped him off, hit the other spot, we met up, got the fuck out. And he said, I don't know what you did different. Like, And it's the one route I ever did where I would actually stop in the middle of the route and have breakfast. Because I would stop at uh, Bojangles, right. call up my first stop to let them know, hey, I'm about 10 minutes away, have my breakfast, go over there and let, give them their medicine. I never did that with any other route because the times were so tight. So he's looking at me like, how the fuck did you do this? You even stopped for breakfast. I'm like, I don't know, man. I just got out here. I never <laughs> sped. I didn't speed. I didn't, you know rushed through the stops i didn't speed anybody up. i just got it in and out just efficiency and, i guess yeah in 11 hours instead of 17 that actually that makes me think of uh there was this uh stephen king short story i don't remember which book it was in but there was a stephen king short story about this the like main character who was the point of view character would always go visit uh this like upstate couple and they were friends and the wife and him would always talk about like, oh, the this route, like, you know, it's like I always try and find the best route between like where you the city you live in and us. And it's like if you look like it would be a certain amount of time just like straight across as a bird flies. But you can't do that because of the roads. And as things progress, it's like each time she's getting it faster and faster. And eventually she's like, it's like say it was like 17 minutes to get it across to the city. She's like, I did it in 16. He's like, that, that's literally not possible. Even if you drove straight through, there's no way that you could get it in that time. And she's like, I did it. I don't know how. And like, so she gets faster and faster. And eventually she basically like disappears from this existence. And he's like, she became a goddess of like travel, basically. Or something. I, it's been a long time since I've read it. And I don't remember what it was called. But like that, that, sto that reminds me of that story where it's like, just this sort of eeriness of, like, how did you do that so efficiently? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what I did, was I cut six hours, or five hours off, you know, no, if I was finished, yeah, six, five to six hours at a time off, but then the route changed. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the stops moved, and one of the stops dropped altogether, and... The one that moved didn't move much farther. Like it was, you know, fine, whatever. But it was it added maybe five minutes to the overall length. But because that other stop dropped completely and it was the last stop I normally had, it affected where I finished the route. And mm. that actually added to my time so that instead of getting back at like 11 and 12, I was getting back at 2 and 3. Still oh. much faster. Right. We couldn't figure out why. And the best we guess is it, you know, took me farther away from uh, this highway hmm. that I mostly followed. Because the route back 
got a lot more convoluted from that last point. Right. And so we thought, well, what if we did it backwards? What if we started at the other stop and, you know, finished at the first stop? It didn't make a lick of difference, huh. which was really... So adding a stop actually sped it up. And so my boss was like, well, why don't you just go to that other stop anyway and then go home? I was like, I'll give it a shot. And it sure as shit made things two hours faster. That's... Wow. Isn't that weird? That's so weird. It really is. That's a and good so, That's a good story to... Uh... Pretty much, Work pretty on. much end this this stream off, uh, cause like I I finished up that level, I got the structure. I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work on like polishing up that level a bit on the next stream, probably to start it off, and then I'll work on another one in another stream. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna finish it there, cause I still gotta like work out and shower wait, wait, before dinner. Wait, 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 hold the fuck up. What? I'm just now looking at your tray at the bottom here, where it's like. I don't know, voice.com and iggy.84 <laughs> chat.x at iggy kid. The fuck did you call me in that YouTube one? Hmm? What? Oh, god damn it. That's not you. <laughs> sure, it's not. That is, that Fucking is, asshole. that is you baked. Slut. That is baked into the overlay. Okay, I've had that. Sure. I've had that YouTube name for like a decade. Uh huh. Uh huh. I see what you think of me. Oh, I man. may be an ape. If I'm an ape, I'm a vanilla gorilla. Oh, yeah. What have you got to tell yourself, honey? All right. This is going to be the end of the stream. Thanks for anybody who watched. Thanks to anybody who watches later. All my social media is on the bottom there. I've been joined by Andrew D. Benj. Check him out. AKA the ape, apparently. Listen. What is it? AD Benj on Twitter? Uh, Andrew D. Benj. Andrew D. Benj. Anything else you want to shout out since you're here? spelled t-h-e-a-p-e apparently okay well that's gonna be the end of this i will come back with another part later i am gonna do this whole world on a stream but uh yeah that's the beginning so it's gonna be a big project thank you for joining me andrew i swear that wasn't an insult at you but if you're gonna hold a grudge fine do what you're gonna do um i think we both know that i can hold a grudge quite well yeah 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 so yes Thanks, everybody, for watching. Goodbye.